an hour late, a uh, minute late, sorry about that. I'm calling this uh, meeting for the Historic Preservation Board to open. Uh, can you give us a roll call, please? Mr. Sprecker. Here. Mr. Mrzinski. Here. Ms. Ryan. Here. Ms. Hallett. Here. Ms. Benoff. Here. Okay. Going on to uh, public comments. Now, what I want to say about public comments is these are general public comments. If you want to talk about any uh, petition that's coming up here, we'll have a public comment at that time where you'll be sw sworn in and you'll be part of the uh, process. Okay, this is just for general. So do we have any general public comments? Hearing none, continue on. Uh, we have some minutes to approve. Now, first off is uh, for August 1st, 2022. Uh, do I have a motion to approve these minutes? I'll move to approve. Okay, I'll, a second? I'll second. Okay. Uh, do we have any discussions on this? No. Nope. Roll call, please. Ms. Dinoff? Yes. Ms. Hallett? Yes. Ms. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Mrzinski? Yes. Mr. Sprecker? Yes. Okay, the next one, October 3rd, 2022. Uh, approve these minutes. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as read, I mean, as written. As written? I'll second. I'll okay. second. She did over there. Okay. Okay, any discussions on this? Hearing none, uh, can we have a roll call vote? Ms. Dinoff? Yes. Ms. Hallett? Yes. Ms. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Rosensky? Yes. Mr. Sprecker? Yes. And for the last, November 7th, 2022. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve November 7th minutes as written. Okay. I'll second. Okay, any discussions on this one? Okay, can we have a roll call vote? Ms. Dinoff? Yes. Ms. Hallett? Yes. Ms. Ryan? Yes. Ms. Rosinski? Yes. Mr. Sprecker? <coughs> yes. Okay, on now we're going to go to quasi-judicial. Ju judicial. Our lawyer will tell you what this means and how it's going to affect us. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> the matters before the City of Tarpon Springs Heritage Preservation Board are quasi-judicial in nature. In a quasi-judicial proceeding, the board's function is to make findings of fact based upon the evidence presented at the hearing and apply those findings of fact to previously established criteria contained in the City of Tarpon Springs Code of Ordinances. This is a legal decision regarding the application before the board. The board may only consider evidence that the law considers competent, substantial, and relevant to the issues arising from the application and the applicable code sections. Any and all persons providing testimony at this hearing are required to do so under oath. All persons testifying at this hearing must give their name, address, and indicate whether or not they have been sworn for the record prior to proceeding with their testimony. All testimony and questioning at this hearing must address matters that are relevant and material to the issues under consideration based on the criteria established in the City of Tarpon Springs Code of Ordinances. If any board member has any disclosures regarding an application, please make your disclosures on the record at the beginning of the hearing. This will include ex parte and voting conflicts of interest. If there is not a full board present at the beginning of the hearing, the applicant may request a continuation to the next regularly scheduled meeting of the Heritage Preservation Board. The following is the established procedure which will be followed at this quasi-judicial hearing. City staff will present its testimony and evidence regarding the application first. The applicant will then have an opportunity to ask questions and cross-examine the staff and any staff witnesses. The applicant will then have the opportunity to present its witnesses and evidence. The city will have the opportunity to cross-examine the applicant and any of the applicant's witnesses. Members of the public opposing the application will be given the opportunity to present their testimony and evidence. Members of the public in support of the application will be given the opportunity to provide their testimony and evidence. The applicant and the city may present any rebuttal testimony and evidence in a closing statement for summary. The board will then close the public hearing for discussion and consideration of the application. At this time, for anyone desiring to speak on any matters before the City of Tarpon Springs Heritage Preservation Board, please stand to receive the oath.
Okay. Those speaking, please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth on the matters before the Heritage Preservation Board for the city of Tarpon Springs this evening? And remember, when you come up to give your testimony, please state your name, address, and indicate that you've been sworn. Thank you very much. Okay, we're going to go on to the first one. <clears throat> this is uh, application 22-139 for Hibiscus Street. Uh, the four businesses there. Caroline? Staff? I don't see the clicker. Uh -oh. Is it white? Is that it? No. I'll write it down. Thank you. He's got it up there. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this is application 22139. Um, it's located at 20 to 24 Hibiscus Street. And this slide's just showing uh, the location of the subject property. Uh, this next slide shows the location of the subject property in um, the historic district. It's right there in the heart of our national historic district. Uh, and the request is for a certificate of approval to completely replace the existing storefronts at 2024 Hibiscus Street with a storefront that matches the altered storefronts at 101 and 105 East Tarpon Avenue, which would include removing two alcove entries at 2024 Hibiscus, reframing the windows to a 90 degree angle. Uh, all doors and glass on the contributing structure would be replaced uh, with new full length continuous display windows with aluminum faux support panels and aluminum framed double entry doors. The slide shows uh, the, the zoning for the area which is in the special area plan. And this is the picture from the Florida master site file when it was last recorded in 2009. Uh, this shows uh, the, the first three properties uh, were built um, by the 1913 Sanborn. So the first three, four the first three storefronts at 24 Hibiscus uh, were, were extant by 1913. And then by 1919, you can see all four of the storefronts were exist. Um, also notable, <clears throat> the Florida master site file notes that um, past use of the structure included uh, the Tarpon Springs Leader newspaper. Uh, and this close up just shows the uh, wood framed awning and some of the more details that were existing in 1919. Um, this is a picture of 20 Hibiscus Street recently before the work started on the property. Uh, this is a picture now of the four storefronts um, after some work had already been started. Uh, and here's some close-ups of additional architectural details that were revealed uh, when the work commenced without a certificate of approval. You can see a decorative cornice there. You kind of have to look closely, but uh, there's a decorative cornice that was hidden behind that stucco. Uh, and the structure was stuccoed uh, around 1980. Uh, these pictures show the stepped parapet side and an original window opening that was used when it was a photographer's. Uh, just some other views of uh, the 2024 side s storefronts. Um, these two storefronts were altered. They no longer have the alcove entrances, uh, but they do have wood doors, and the 2024 has uh, retains its transom windows. You can see that a little bit closer here. Uh, the storefront next to it, the transoms have been covered. And then 20 hibiscus has been altered. It maintains the alcove style opening, but um, the wood has been replaced with uh, aluminum. And then 24 
I'm sorry, 24 is the one that retains the uh, original storefront. And this just shows some of the components of uh, an alcove storefront. Um, as noted, there's a storefront cornice that's been hidden behind that stucco, uh, transom windows, display windows, the entrance door, structural supports, and then apron bulkhead. Uh, and this is what is proposed. This is what is extant at 101 and 105 East Tarpon Avenue. Uh, so our standards for review for a certificate of approval, I'm um, gonna go through some of the most salient points. Uh, new construction consistency, the height, width, and materials of the front facade and entry would be significantly altered by the proposed project. Uh, door, windows, doors, and entries, entryways, and accompanying features will be demolished and replaced. Um, the neighborhood district context, changing those alcove entryways would change the relationship of the structure with the street and the pedestrian environment. Uh, essentially, all of the historic architectural features of the property would be removed or covered uh, under the proposed project. Um, the proposed project is not consistent with the period of construction or later modifications. Um, there's significant, co significant conflict with the Secretary's guidelines, um, including retaining the historic character of the property, um, recognizing the, physical, uh, the property as a physical record of its time, distinctive feature, features, finishes, and construction techniques uh, being preserved, um, repairing rather than replacing deteriorated historic features, and exterior alterations should not destroy historic materials that characterize the property. Uh, the project conforms with city codes, but it is in com conflict with the historic preservation element of the comprehensive plan. Uh, and these are kind of hard to read on the slide, but um, for our design review guideline manuals, um, there are a number of conflicts, particularly uh, guideline one, preserve. Uh, guideline two, repair rather than replace. Restore historic, si significant historic features. Uh, make sensitive replacements. Context sensitive design. Um, match the existing or historic siding. On this one, it's kind of, um, we've got kind of two stories here. It says don't stucco over masonry, uh, but if it has already previously been stuccoed, you don't necessarily have to remove it because that can uh, da damage the structure further. So kind of have some competing guidelines there. Uh, masonry should be repaired. Um, but particularly guideline 75 um, states, this is additional guidelines for commercial properties. Um, so especially relevant for this project are maintain the historic layout of commercial storefronts, maintain the window and door pattern of the storefront, uh, historic entrances are typically flanked with glass display windows, maintain and restore character defining features, um, including storefronts, transoms, bulkheads, windows, and architectural details, uh, preserve or restore the historic size and configuration of glass display windows where possible, uh, st storefront windows should retain their historic material and be consistent with the prominent styles and eras of the building. Um, retain the panel that is located below this display window. Um, and maintain uh, guideline 80 states to maintain recessed entries where they exist. Uh, I kind of just ran through all of those. So um, staff recommends denial of uh, application 22-139 uh, as presented um, based on inconsistency with the review criteria as we just went over. Um, and essentially this project is proposing to replace historic storefronts with modern storefronts in substantial conflict with the Secretary of Interior's standards. Um, however, if the Heritage Preservation Board uh, would like to approve the project with conditions, it's recommended either that only the stucco portion of the project be approved or the intact historic storefront at 24 Hibiscus be retained uh, and the wood doors and transoms be retained. 
And also, as always, uh, the certificate of approval would expire in three years if a building permit has not been issued. And with that, I can take any questions. I have a question. Um, has the ADA uh, compliance been considered with this project? Because there's a step going up to the um, well, or is that not part of our? It's not. Um, it's not required for historic structures. Okay. Carol, I have a question. Oh, okay. Um, in your um, recommended uh, outcome of this, you're mentioning. Uh, to keep intact the storefront at 24. So are, does that mean the other storefronts, you wouldn't have a problem with them being changed and you're just suggesting that the one be maintained? It's not my personal problem, I'm just going by the guidelines, but um, th this, this storefront is closest to the original storefront, if not the original storefront. At least the, the original. That's, that's 24? That's 24. So that's the original storefront configuration, and it maintains all of the elements that all of them would have originally had. Um, it's staff recommendation that if you want to approve this, that at, at a minimum this storefront be maintained. In addition, we'd like to see the transoms, uh, where the transoms are still extant, to be maintained. In any of the fronts? In any of the fronts. Caroline, when was 20 hibiscus storefronts altered? Uh, in the 1980s. Because it looks brand new in that picture, so. I it does, <laughs> but according to the records, it's 1980. It was altered. It may have been further altered since then. The first alteration was in 1980. And then the cornice that's, that's in the one picture, are you recommending that that be brought out? I mean, I, when I originally talked to the applicant about it, they were excited when they found it and wanted to. It, it is, it's beautiful, but um, I, 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 would, I would love to see that um, because it'd be bringing it back to closer to its historic. But that's not the application in front of us, and I understand, you know, there's expense, we have to be practical. So as long as it's, you know, stuccoed over like it was, it'll still be there if somebody ever wants to go back and, and restore it. But yes, in an ideal world, we would restore that cornice. Are you offering the city's file in this matter for the board's consideration and their determination? Yes. Thank you. Any more questions? Are we going to hear from the applicant? Hmm? Are we going to hear from the applicant? No. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, the applicant, would you like to come forward? is the applicant, but I'm, I'm her contractor. I'm Bill Larson. I live at 20 Reed Street, and I've been sworn in. So there was something about repairing instead of replacing, you know, because, like, what we had done on the front of the building was, uh, you know, the product approval codes were all approved, and we, we replaced it with new, not – there's no repairing. It's – that's literally falling apart. I mean, I can push the glass out with my hands if I wanted to. So, I mean, I feel there's a little life safety issue there with – with concerns to the, some of the storefront. And the transoms above that were covered in the stucco, I, I'm not really sure why we wouldn't be allowed to just replace those. I, I mean, it would bring it back, like like Caroline said, more to its original look. Uh, some of the stucco that's covering the brick along the sides, we've, we've, we've taken it off. It was mostly fallen off and, and repaired it above the transoms, but down the sides, the bricks intact. If it has to be restruck, that's something we can do. You know, you know, give it that 1919 look. Um, and as far as the, I guess the uh, the way the entranceways are, you know, we weren't aware that. I mean, because the one on the far end by the alley is at a 90 degree angle, but but if 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 we have to keep them concave like that, that's fine with us. We just all the wood that is supporting that that's what glass is left is rotten. It's just crumbling. I mean, it's, you got to do something with it for it just, you know, falls out into the street. So, uh, you know, that's where I'm, uh, that's where I'm at. That's what my two cents is. Um, I, I don't think 
think I have anything in it on that. Because now, Caroline, you know, like above those, what we're seeing here, there's like a three foot, just fixed glass. Well, they're all kind of bashed out and boarded over. And that's what, you know, that's part of it. You know, you, you were saying that that wasn't on the, that wasn't the app on the application to repair or replace. Um, like you just have the storefront that's, yeah, well, I, I thought I heard you say that. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, it's replacing the so storefront that you see, but then there's some above it as well that's mm -hmm. covered with a, a, a material to prevent weather from getting in right now. Because when we took the brick out or took the stucco off the brick, there was no brick there. There was just old fixed panels that were all kind of termite rotted wood. And so. Mm -hmm. At the very least, we'd have to take that out and frame it in to stucco it even. So that, that was our, uh, our thought was that we would just replace it with the same sort of storefront we had done in the front of the building. Okay. Do we have any questions? So, so Bill, on the, the, can you, Caroline, I don't know if you could go to the one with the picture with the cornice. I just kind of wanted to understand something. Yeah. Let's see if we've got some middle ground here to kind of put back some oh. character so in combination. Yeah, right there. Right. I think it's covered up in that one. There you go. There you go. Yeah, that one. Bill, is there any way to to give us some character back above the yeah. the door level? Yeah, that's what that's what I thought we were. We're here for because today. we kind of got a hodgepodge anyway on the lower level and i i love the I, i'd like to keep the transom too we could but if we can meet in the middle because you do have one you said it's a 1980s storefront window and then if well, we yeah. could get that character back above get that cornice back or maybe bring some of that out which i don't know if there are any better pictures that you guys have well, to give us some of that character yeah we could take some better pictures but um oh you got some pictures but uh that was my that was my whole point it's like yeah it's like we should you know oh that's we, probably we, what we were he was referring to caroline when we were talking about that cornice you thought it wasn't part of the yeah the you said something about it's not on the application but i thought that's besides this the storefront we're looking at that's there that's behind that cover so so just just quickly um, if you are going to be submitting pictures, you have to send them to the city because they have to be made a part of the record. Um, and the board, if you want to, you have the recommended conditions in your packet, but with respect to the cornice, um, you know, that still is an architectural feature um, that's within your purview in issuing your certificate of approval. So if you wanted to add that as a condition, there's not a problem with that. Okay. okay. I just want to understand, can you go back to the picture with the windows? Right now there's sort of a little alcove. Are you proposing getting rid of that? Well, initially we had. We were going to make it like the one on the, the alley. Yeah. Um, and then I was made aware that, yeah, like we, we, we absolutely could do it this way mm -hmm. as it sits. But my point is, you know, the wood that's holding that glass is is it crumbles in your hands so and you literally could push that storefront out if you wanted to so some you know i just want to rebuild that structure so it's safe and as far as the alcove we can keep that in there that that's not a, that's not a problem but that alcove was that put in there in 1980 no this no, alcove no. Is, a, is original that's original that was original okay. Is that original? Yes, th okay. this particular storefront is the original alcove. Um, there's an, another one that's an alcove. It kept the alcove design, but it switched it out with aluminum from wood and uh, got rid of some of the, the bottom sill, so it's okay. a little bit larger dimensions. Mm -hmm. For that matter, even the one on the end that's at 90 degrees, we could bring, we could make it go back to the way the other ones were. Oh, that'd be good. We could simply do that. If, you all happy. Is there going to be 
there, there's no awning or anything, because I know there was an awning previous, right? Yeah, there were awnings before, but they, they took them down. So those are going to stay down? Yes, okay. I understand. I, I do have a question for clarification uh, for staff on your conditions. Um, it does say, would doors and transoms be retained? Um, but it sounds like what the applicant's talking about is other wood there and not necessarily the wood doors, or is it just the I'm wood sorry. doors? Yeah, it's the, it's the wood that encases the, these openings and these, and these pieces of glass. Okay. They're, they're so you're not asking for that to be retained, no, correct? So my, my, my staff rebuttal would be um, that we would want to repair first, but if we need to replace, we want to replace with like materials. So replacing glass with glass and wood with wood, mm -hmm. not wood with aluminum. <clears throat> well, there, there, yeah, like even right there, you, you can see there is no wood surrounding the glass. I mean, there's wood doors instead of using the traditional storefront doors like are in the front of the building we i guess we could you know make that condition as well but y you have to take the storefront out to replace the rotten wood that's holding it together there's no repairing it it's 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 done its time it it has to be replaced or yeah. it's just gonna fall out it's been in florida for over 100 yeah. years so yeah yeah it's done its time so the replacement would be aluminum or wood well, the, the, the replacement, it, what you see now is aluminum around that glass. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, the model of it is the front of the building and just like the place across the street. I mean, that was approved by, mm. by you folks, you know, at some point when, when the front of the building was done and we're just asking to do the same thing. And we don't have, the one thing that Caroline had said, we had, our, our design had showed we were gonna put them all at a 90 degree angle. Well, we simply don't have to do that. We could make that concession and keep it the same way. It, it just put the storefront in to today's standards. Yeah, but you, you'd be keeping the spacing, like the spacing underneath. And yes, sir, yes. The only difference would be uh, aluminum it, instead of wood. Well, like I said, uh, I mean, it, it, yeah, I mean, there, I, I don't, the, the only thing that's wood is maybe the doors. Okay. I, you know, I don't think there's any other wood there. I think it's all aluminum. It's old mill finished aluminum, not like today's structural aluminum. But right. 20 and 24 are aluminum windows today, is what you're saying? I'm just looking at. Yes, and, and I think on the end, what, what's the quirky fork? What is, like, what's I like the to make it. Um, are, I'm sorry, are you the applicant? Yes, I am. Okay. I am the applicant. You have to go, you do have to oh. go up to the yeah. microphone. Um, or if it's easier for him to pull it down to you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was you, you say, can sit just down. take it to her. Okay. Take it to her. Yeah. yeah. Nikki, just sit. Yeah, that, that'd be better. We just have to be able to get you recorded. Okay. Thank you. Yes, um, my name is Nomiki Vavlas. Um, I am the applicant. I live at 1403 Circle Drive in Tarpon Springs. And I've been here before, uh, maybe not with all of you, the same people, but we've had the same um, couple of uh, hearings about the two front storefronts on Tarpon Avenue, which is now uh, Backdraft Pizzeria and Twisted Orange. I purchased this building in 2008 and as you all know, uh, we really didn't have a main street back then. It was nothing, excuse me, but it was horrible. Um, after purchasing this building, I, I didn't know what I was purchasing, and after I got it, I was like, what did I just do? However, uh, since then, um, we beautified the building. Um, we did a lot of good things to it from different tenants. And finally, I have found uh, tenants that care about their businesses, care about Main Street, care about um, moving up and making everything better than what it was. However, the structure of the building was letting me down. The roof wasn't leaking on the building, but the water was coming in from the storefronts. Um, and this was a nonstop uh, problem for the last maybe seven, eight years. 
because that was the time that um, I was able to rent the spaces out and bring uh, people to downtown to actually be proud of their businesses. Um, since then, we tried with just covering things up. We, we repla I replaced the door on 26 Hibiscus. Um, excuse me, one thing I wanted to add is that when you turn the corner on Tarpon Avenue, and that's backdrops going into uh, Hibiscus Street, the first storefront is 20 Hibiscus, and then the second is 22, then it's 24 and 26. So the one by the alley is 26. Um, No, it is 22. Yeah. No, I'm getting there. Um, so, so starting again from the Hibiscus Street, going into Hibiscus from Tarpon Avenue, the first one, Caroline, can you show the first one where my office is? Is 20 Hibiscus. So that, that That's one right with there. the white uh, new framing going inside. So the one next to it would be 22. 20. Two, yes, the picture that we had previously with the wooden door that you were talking about, 22. that was 22. Um, if you go back to 20 hibiscus, which is the white framing, not this one, not that one, the one that one right there, one. yeah. That's 20 hibiscus. And if you'll remember back about 20 years ago, there was an artist there. Photopolis it was, because my son was in elementary school taking art classes from him. And it, the, the place was just the way it was. His studio was just the, the way it was. Um, and, and like we said, till today, everything was fine the way it is. We didn't uh, replace anything in the front of the storefronts. We did a lot of um, work, like makeup work inside to keep the play, the buildings clean and everything. And it looks beautiful. We kept the nice ceilings on top and people admire that and everything. But now it comes to the problem where the water is coming in through the storefronts and not from the roof. And it's not only coming in through uh, the glass and the stucco from outside here, because um, even next door with the wood, you got the wood rottening on top I'm not very good with my uh, technical uh, areas of the doors. So when you open the door, there's still uh, rotten wood on top that's holding those doors together. Make a long story short, the 20 is caved in like this. 22, which is now Sweetwood Bakery, she's an amazing young lady. Um, it took her about a year to fix the, her new kitchen inside and baking her custom cakes. And we still have the problem of that brown door that's ready to fall off. The glass is not intact like it shows. Um, it has to be replaced and with better framing. And then it goes down to the, this is 22, down to 24, which is a flat 90 degree front. And then 26 is the black door that you saw. Two years ago, I had a tenant there, and again, water problems from her door, and we replaced the door. Mr. Larson, if you remember, we replaced her door to match the previous door, but it was still a problem because the framing around the doors was rotting. And sometimes if it's not the door, it's the window parts that's come in. And then we have the termite issue coming in from the outside going into uh, the building. With all that said, uh, in December of 22, beginning of December, we decided to, um, I decided to just take it on and do something about it. Be now that it was a dry weather and not falling into the stormy weather coming in with hurricanes in the summer, because I didn't want to deal with all the water coming in through the storefronts. Hired Mr. Larson. We got a permit to restucco the storefronts of the of the building above. As we're re replacing the storefront, the stucco, the old stucco. First of all, it wasn't thick enough. It was just kind of layered over the brick. If 
I remember, because the pieces were coming down, and we have photographs. If you like, we can send them to you. Um, so the job wasn't done right, first of all. The brick behind it was beautiful. Just really revealing what was there is gorgeous. Um, this is, first I applied, Caroline, first I applied for storefronts, and I wanted to do it one storefront at a time. And then after we, re we saw what was underneath and revealed the brick part of it, we fell in love with it. And then there was a beam, the uh, original beam, and then we noticed that there were also windows at one time that were falling ap apart. We, I wanted, I honestly wanted to keep it. But as they were doing their work, performing and removing it, even the brick was falling apart. The brick wasn't strong enough to hold its place together. And a matter of fact, we're talking about it with uh, Bill, and I'm like, oh my God, what if I do this? I called in to um, a couple ladies like Caroline and Pat um, in the city, and I said, oh, guys, you got to come and see. This is exciting. I love it, whatever. I want to keep it. But monetarily, cost-wise, I couldn't keep it. I couldn't bring it to uh, where it should, where it can hold on this building. But I'm willing to do both. I said, let's keep the windows, the old look. We'll change the front, get a better front. I was going for a 90 degree angle, but then by looking at this and listening to the staff reports, we don't mind keeping the two inward doors the way they are, but I like to make them all the same where we have we can use the same um, metal that we've used for backdrafts and twisted orange around because it's it's not the same building but it's two different buildings and and keep the height where we have the windows on the top if we can keep the beam with the rosettes we'll keep that too I'm willing to do that too with it but we had to stuck with the top and put the original beam on it with the foam, and we stopped there because we need needed your approval in well, order to get licensed, yeah, and it's move on. Yeah. Yes. So. I'm, I'm willing to work with you. I am. But I can't leave it the way it was before. These doors are falling apart. Uh, May comes around, it's termite season. The rain's gonna start hitting up. We don't get flooded, but the rain comes through the walls. So something has to be done. Thank you. Oh, I want to tell you something. Um, Sweetwood Bakery, she had a, she's a phenomenal um, baker and pastry chef and everything, brought cookies for you guys. She gave us a box of cookies. There you go. No, it's not a bribe. Oh. <laughs> no, not. <laughs> Enjoy your pass cookies. Those. You can pass them that way. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll okay. just start. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Thank you. Oh my She's goodness. Amazing. Here. Okay. Oh, you're you want, yeah. yeah. Take one. I, I, the only other thing I have to say is that we are replacing yeah. with impact glass as well. Yeah. So obviously that's not what's there. There you go. Enjoy. Uh, um, hey, Bill. One yeah. more clarification. So the two units either. on the end towards the alley, are you talking about taking the glass all the way down to the ground like at Bath Drafts? Mm -hmm. so we, it's, it's all rotten, yeah. I and mean, the stucco, it's rotten, you're saying? Yeah, the, the wood behind the stucco is. And, you know, here's the thing. It's like we're willing to work with you guys however you want us to do it. It's just that... Um, the storefront that's there is falling out. So, <clears throat> you know, we got to do something. Wait for, you know, we just got to work it out. Is, is it just the one storefront that still has the wooden doors? I believe it's two. The other three do not. I believe it's two. I think it's three of them that have wood doors. What condition are those wooden doors in? Or at least two. So. There, you can see uh, there the two ends, the, or the, or those no, black it'd be ones. The, the two in the middle, I think. Okay. Yeah, the one on the but end's been replaced, and this uh, Nikki's office is like a storefront. Yeah, you can the see. The light is my yeah. office. That's where that photography studio was. And then there's an old door. 
Yeah, I mean, those doors are kind of funny. They're they don't really shut. Yeah. And are you replacing the white doors or? We were, yeah, we were proposing to do all the four storefronts. I'll, I'll redo them all. So they look like the front of the Consistent. building. Consistent. Yes. Essentially what you're proposing is to keep the styles like they are right now, but replacing the, make it more weather tight with uh, yeah. aluminum. Yes, sir. Things like yeah. this, you know, with your- uh, And impact <clears throat> glass. Yeah. And, it, and it's bronze too, it's to match the front of the building. But, you know, hey, if, if we need wood doors, uh, we can work that out too. Yeah. Maybe a composite anyway, we don't, we don't like wood, you know, but a composite doesn't rot. Damn. Is 26 a composite door now? Um, I one? believe so. It looks like it on there. Yeah, I believe it's fiberglass with a composite jam. Okay. <clears throat> Any more questions? Thank you very much. Okay, any public comment on this, this application? Someone's up. Okay. Hi there, my name is Nomiki Kambarakis. I'm at 1109 Sunset Drive. I am a tenant of Nomiki Vavilis. So what the goal is here, I think, and it's just in a nutshell, is to keep the, to keep the old and bring in the new. So where you saw the cornice at the top where the beam is, above that is the, is the, is the windows, are the windows that were there originally and they want to bring up the storefront to the top where that cornice is and then keep that, the windows open. I think that keeping it like that and then leaving the other, two, the other three different would just look odd. And if they would just make it all one uniform color and everything, I think it would look really, really, really nice. And I think that we can keep the historic while bringing in the modern as well. Yeah. Yeah, it would just look much uniform and pretty for downtown Tarpon Springs. Bring it to the standard of downtown, like a downtown look, I think. Yeah, but you know the- What's okay. that? Uh, a lot of times having it different makes it a little bit more quirky. And but it good. wouldn't be different from the ones in the front. It would look exactly the same as the ones in the front on North. Florida Avenue. And then want to keep the historic, but yet we want to cover up all the historic that's there. Yeah. And it was covered up, so. I think that if we let come to a happy medium, I think it would all work out. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Let me understand though. Is it all gonna be flat? It's not gonna have to all be flat. Oh. We can we can keep those floors right. the way they are. You're gonna do it that way. Okay. okay. Put in the new, what is it, to all four of them. The aluminum and black. And it'll be it'll be dark. It'll be like a black or a big bronze okay. or whatever. Okay. Okay, uh, any rebuttals? Uh, yeah, I'd just like to respond to a couple of points. Um, so uh, they spoke about the approval for 101 and 105 East Tarpon Avenue. Right. Staff uh, recommended denial for that application and it was a split vote, it was not a unanimous vote. Um, and one of the things that you need to ask and, and satisfy yourselves of is, is replacing it with the same materials infeasible? Um, so is it infeasible to replace it with, with wood surrounds or something that um, mimics the look of wood so to make it look more like the historic character? Is that infeasible and do we need to go with an aluminum or is that just um, you know, uh, replacing a historic storefront with a modern storefront? Uh, so just those two points. Mm. Thank you. Gives us something to think about. Okay, uh, do we have a motion? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see your hand. Oh, don't mean to. <laughs> you need to sit closer to the front. Hi, hello, Nils Hasse with uh, 124 Shattuck Street, Tarpon Springs. I uh, have a historic home that I've restored and have noticed, wasn't 
planning on getting involved in this argument, but uh, you know, the cat was laid out of the bag when you, when you messed up the front of Tarpon Avenue. You already started this building with changing the character of the building. Now you're holding hostage someone who is in the back part of it and trying to fix something. So in today's world, as also I'm also a general contractor, by the way, retired. But what you're proposing for them to put back wood is almost impossible. It's, it's quite expensive to do that. But you already have screwed this thing up by allowing Tarpon Avenue to put up aluminum. It looks <coughs> great. Is it historic? No. But you've already ruined the integrity of the building. So, you know, I, I agree with these people that they ought to be able to do what they want to there. You've already got aluminum there. Now you're trying to remuddle, so to speak. And if you want to do this right, then the whole front of Tarpon Avenue needs to change as long as the other buildings. So, you know, it's too late. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I understand. Okay. Any others? Do I hear a motion? Then we can start talking about it. Mm -hmm. How to put the motion together. I think we're going to have to kind of kind of figure our motion out here because okay. we are going to have to meet in the middle somewhere. Let, let, here. Let, let's, we got to do a little bit of talking before we. Yes, so. Somebody um, has to make a motion. Yeah, 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 right. you, you haven't closed the public hearing yet. Once you make the motion, whether you announce it or not, that kind of ends and closes the public hearing. So now you still have the ability to discuss it amongst yourselves. And if you have additional questions and testimony, you can take that before you kind of work through how you want to make your motion. Okay? Okay, so what we can do is just say we're going to make a motion, close, close off the, and start talking about it. Yes, you, you, if you want to at this point, um, you can kind of discuss a little bit of what's been presented and see if you have the need to take any additional testimony. Okay, okay. I do have a, maybe the, to that point. I just wanna make sure that we all understand there's four units. Out of the four units, all of them have aluminum windows today. I kind yes. of heard a mixture of that. So one of them is wood today, and the other three are aluminum. Uh, please make sure you're on the record. Thank you, sir. Three out of four for sure do. The, the quirky forker, I don't know what the address is on it. The one on the end by the alley. 26. Yeah, it, it may have some wood in there, but it's like, it's not from 1990. It's like some T111 or something. It's somebody... It's, it's not original, not original to the uh, building. Okay. Yeah, so most of it's going to be already aluminum. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and we're halfway already out the door because you've already got 20 mm -hmm. kind of sided in the way. I'm, 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 I'm right in the middle on this because I feel like we've already got one of them done. And if the other three are yeah. Yeah, well, falling down, and then it's a safety issue, and we put somebody, I mean, they're putting somebody at, at risk. And, you know, with a business, you need to secure it from rain. And right that, now, that's a, a good point. I know I'm interceding here, but Nikki did bring up a good point. It, they all leak. I yeah. Mean, hers doesn't, I don't think, but yes, it, does. it does. Okay. Okay. The other three definitely do. We would put buckets when it's raining. Yeah. Okay. And it's not from the ceiling, it's coming from yeah. the Yeah, we, we, we understand. Okay. We got it. Okay. Okay, so. I got my question answered. Yeah. You know, my feeling on this is, you know, you need to secure it. Right now, the only way to do that is with the aluminum. Three of them are already that way. Now, if they keep the configurations where you have the uh, recessed doorways and the, uh, what do they call them, cornices? The above, yeah, yeah, above it. You're keeping the look. 
I'd like to see the cornices hmm? be re, you know, brought back to life. Right? Yeah. The cornice. And Corn yeah, that, that would help out there a lot. Cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So, look, yeah. I can, do you ready to pl close? Do you want me to make yeah, a motion? You can make a motion anytime you'd but, like. Because, look, <laughs> I was the one person that I think that I was the one that wasn't unanimous when we did the Twisted Orange well, location. I remember that one. Yeah, I was, I was, that one was a tough one for me, so. Me too. Um, I feel like we are already kind of down the road on this, so my motion would be keep the configuration as it is today. Um, let them replace it with a modern storefront, but above that storefront, restore the cornice and the, um, what's above it. I think there's some windows or some the, whatever that is. I to believe give the us top part's called the transom, yes. right? Yeah. So and and just to be clear, when you say retain the shape, you're talking about the recessed, yes. recessed doors recessed. and yeah. the cornice. Yeah. Only okay. two of them. Only two of them. Yeah. Just. So they would all be recessed. No, it would be it, the configuration it is today. So two not recessed. Yeah. And two. Because they don't need to all look like exactly the same. No keep some architectural character, leave it as it is. And it look like no. wood? It's not gonna look like wood. It's but wood. even if they went back with a like product, it's probably gonna be composite. It's just that it's what we live in. It's 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 yeah. well, it's not gonna hold up. Backdrafts and stuff, that's all bronze. Yeah, wood. it's all aluminum bronze. Yeah. So this as will be bronze aluminum wood. bronze. Mm -hmm. Which could is you, what could you repeat then what your motion is? My motion would be to. And could you bring the mic? Do you want me to look closer? Do you want me to? My motion would be have? to keep the existing configuration of the facade. Let them replace and update the window, the below with the windows and the doors. Keep the to what's proposed, um, with the exception of, like I said, the you know the recesses, and then above that door level restore the transoms and the cornice. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, do we want to put anything about the doors? The door that's on the end is a composite door. The door that's on the, on the other opposite end is an aluminum door. The one in the middle is a wood door. They're all Just, three different. Yeah, all different, okay, yeah. And they're not, they're, they're not historic. Okay, okay, sounds good. I'll second that, Pam. We have a second. Any more talking on this? Yeah, I'm not, uh, not uh, I'm okay with all of it except two of the fronts being flat and two being recessed. If uh, the gentleman didn't seem to have a problem with recessing them all, since they all have to be torn apart anyway and rebuilt, am I correct? I mean, you're gonna be tearing it all out to rebuild it. Yes, sir. You said yourself that it's not repairable. I gave okay. it support of this thing. No. Well, the one nice thing about doing it that way is right now you have no way to get out of the rain because the <laughs> umbrella is gone. <laughs> So if you add those back, you mm -hmm. do give yeah. a tenant somebody to get out of the weather. Exactly. You've got a step. So, so I, I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't support it with two flat and two recessed. I'd like I to agree. see them all recessed. You agree? Since they'd have to tear them all apart anyway. Same. Okay, okay, well. Mm. Do you agree with that? I'm missing what he said. So he currently, said, currently you have a motion two. on the floor though? Yeah. Right, yeah, so you have a motion on the floor two. and a second. Yeah, he wants them all to say. Yeah. And we're Reset. discussing now. So yeah, we're, we're, we're still in discussion I mean, the, phase. The motion can be amended or changed. Correct, so the maker of the motion would have to amend it and the second would have to concur right. or the motion would have to fail and then you can make a new motion. Okay. But those windows okay. being recessed are part of the historic, the original building is <coughs> when I asked that question. The they were part of the original, yes. Right, so I wouldn't want to get rid of that since they were original. I think too, part of it, 
the, probably the reason they weren't or they were pushed out it gives the building additional square footage yeah. inside which is I'm guessing yeah. is why they were done that way to begin with but somebody approved it so the question now is we have two recesses two on recesses but it's like that today huh but it's there today that's what's there today okay so do you want to amend it you got the amending Nobody. No. Did you second? I seconded it. Okay. Did somebody redo do the motion? No, we haven't. We haven't re, re, Okay. We we have not amended it yet. Yeah. Um. Kind of wicked. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I mean. Uh, you know. It's, we would. Do we have? So if I don't amend. If I don't amend it, they vote on it, and if it fails, then they redo it. Then you can redo the motion if it fails, correct? Okay. So, okay, so right now we have it where it's kind of going to be left the way it is with two 90s, two recesses, two non recesses. Are we right. allowed to ask a question to the contractor again at this point? I believe so, or yeah. Or is it closed where I can't? Um, technically, you close the public hearing, um, but I am a fan if you feel it's going to assist you in your del deliberations of allowing, as long as the board chair is okay with that, allowing additional questions. You okay with it? Yep. <laughs> One more question, sir. <laughs> so I do, I do like the idea of the recess, and that's why I, I want to ask this question. So there's because there's no way to get out of weather and that's a big deal when we get pop-ups every day and people are running in so is it a major expense to go back and put that in well I mean there's it, it it's not that it's a major expense but there is the consideration I guess of the tenants they they've rented that square footage and now they're essentially going to lose it so I mean I I don't know how that would work out there but it's, it's as far as I'm concerned, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, you know, I'm, like you said, I'm tearing it down anyway. I can put it back like the other two, but uh, I don't, I don't, yeah, it, it would definitely, you know, change. It would, there's just more material and a little more labor. Okay, and thank then you. It, it, the other thing would be the tenants, yeah. All right, let's leave mine like it is, vote on it, and then yeah, if let's it doesn't pass, we, we can reamend it with Philip's suggestion. Okay, so okay. We'll vote on what we have. So what I have is um, to approve the application to replace the windows and doors with aluminum and keep the recessed storefronts and restore the cornices. That means mm. two and two. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, now, the, the now if this recess were only going to be two, because the way you read okay. it, it almost sounded like all of them. Keep, keep the it, two keep it as, it's a, as it's configured today. And that's to add the two recesses. You now. have two, two recesses, yeah. no, two and no, two nine. We already oh, have out two. of the four, you only have two recesses. Her, her motion, she's stay, say, stating that her motion is going to stay the same, which would be for the two. Two and two. Two and two. Okay. Uh, it right. looked the same way. Mm -mm. Okay. Okay. Ms. Uh, Denaw? Yes. Ms. Hallett? No. Ms. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Mrzinski? No. Mr. Sprecker? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you, guys. That was a hard one. Okay. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's go on. We got. Okay. Do we, we're, we don't need anything else on this one, do we? No, we're done with that, aren't we? Okay, our next one is 2303. This is on uh, 106 West Park Street. This is the old uh, uh, sponge. Sponge dock. Or sponge. Sponge warehouse. barn. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. So oh, this is uh, the location and context of the, the subject structure. Um, as you can see, there's a couple of different uh, zoning types surrounding the building. We have um, residential medium. The structure itself is in Waterfront Commercial Fishing Development District. Uh, and then we have some uh, residential urban. It's uh, quite, quite a little hodgepodge over here where it's located. 
Uh, here's its location within the historic district. Uh, and the applicant is seeking a certificate of approval to construct a new, to, okay, this is a long one, guys. <laughs> uh, to construct a new 1,200 square foot warehouse on the property, construct an ADA ramp to the front of the property um, to the existing contributing structure, uh, paver walkways, drive apron, and an ADA park space, parking space, fenced paver patio and grassy dog area, relocate fencing along Roosevelt Boulevard to create a gravel parking area, install riprap to offset high tide wake, create retention areas, new signage, new awnings, and convert um, existing gravel areas to defined parking spaces. Uh, so here's the structure on the 1913 sand worn map. Is again on the 1919 Sanborn map. And here it is again on the 1926 Sanborn map. Uh, so this structure is the E.R. Mears Sponge Packing House and it's individually listed on the National Register of Historic Places and that happened in 1991. Uh, it was built in 1905 and the building is significant because of its association with the Tarpon Springs sponge industry. So actually, when this picture was taken in 2009, it was still operating uh, as a sponge packing house. Uh, distinctive features on the building noted in the Florida Master Site file include wood surrounds, metal grates over the windows, uh, and the faded outline of GEO Nichols on the south side. Uh, a shed addition on the north side of the building, which you can see here, was added at an unknown date, but it does appear in the 1919 Sanborn map. Let me go back and point that out. It's a little there, over there on the north side. Okay, so here is a picture of the subject property uh, recently. For context, uh, it has some residential across the street from it. Uh, has some multifamily residential. Uh, and here's a picture of the facade. So looking at the facade, uh, just kind of showing the area here. Uh, this is the south side. Um, the east side is kind of blocked by this um, chain link fence that has um, fabric on it. Um, so uh, here's here we're looking at the west side. Um, in comparison to 2016 to 2023. Um, you can see the old wooden door has been replaced. Uh, the window size has been changed and the, the loft door seems to be um, it's still there, it looks like, it's just maybe uh, adjusted or repaired a little bit. Um, and this is showing the south and east sides in 2011. You can see um, there was another loft door up there. Um, you can see, note, please note the size and shape of the openings there below the loft door. And then in addition, there was a small two pane window along the side that's no longer extant. Uh, this shows the existing site plan. Uh, this is the proposed project, some, some elevations showing you what it would look like. At the top, you can see the new ADA ramp to the front door. Uh, along the south side, you can see new doors and windows and fencing. Um, and then on the north elevation, showing you that shed addition that was added. Um, it's just another site plan showing the proposed project. and some renderings to help you get a better idea of what that might look like. Uh, in addition, so this is the proposed signage for the project. Um, they want to remove the sponges painted and uh, repaint it at a lower location uh, where that historic loft door was. They're proposing a sign made out of metal or similar material, um, approximately 84 inches wide and 50 inches high. 
Uh, no sign lighting, but it would be illuminated by the existing light. So unfortunately, this project touches on just about all of our standards of review. Um, the proportions of the proposed new warehouse um, are consistent with the adjacent contributing structure and other structures in the surrounding area. And the proposed contributing structure renovations would not alter the historic height and width. Um, the application materials for the subject property, property indicate that doors, windows, steps, fixtures, and handrails will maintain a basic original era look and feel. From visual inspection, um, it's been termined, determined that the original doors on the west, south, and east elevations have been placed, replaced without a permit, and the ex historic dimensions of the doorways have been altered. Um, the original dimensions of the window on the Roosevelt Boulevard facade has been altered and the window replaced. On the southern elevation, two of the historic windows have been replaced. Uh, there was a previous certificate of approval, but no building permit was issued for that, and one two-pane window has been covered. Uh, the view on the east side of the building is obstructed, but it's clear that the original doorway has been altered. The loft door has been replaced with a louvered vent, and an unpermitted addition appears to be blocking the original window on that elevation. So, rather than referring these issues to the building official for enforcement proceedings, uh, staff proposes that uh, we remedy these code violations through consultation through the execution of this pro proposed project uh, should it get all of its approvals. Um, and I have some conditions that I will discuss with you at the end. Um, so uh, the relationship, we're talking about district, neighborhood district and context. Um, so the proposed project would alter the relationship between the building and the street through the addition of patios, uh, the proposed warehouse, retention areas, riprap. It's, it's going to make some pretty significant changes um, to the context of the neighborhood. Um, but although it would change the view, set, view shed, it's anticipated to enhance the streetscape through landscaping improvements and activating the pedestrian environment. Um, our standards of review is the roof. Um, I, I originally thought the roof had been altered, I think, uh, replaced. I think it may have just been altered uh, because the overhang is less prominent than the structure uh, when it was last surveyed. Um, again, if, if this is approved, we just want to make sure that everything's up to code and we get it all permitted through this project. So size and mass. The size and mass of the contributing structure would not be altered. Um, however, it has been altered at some point between January 2019 and January 22 through the addition of an unpermitted addition on the east elevation. And again, we just want to try and get everything up to code um, because it is obstructing an original opening. Um, the new 1,200 squ square foot warehouse reflects the historical character of the area and would be cl clearly subordinate to the primary contributing structure. Um, the simple warehouse structure type is, would fit right in with uh, this historically industrial area, and it would be buffered by the retention area, parking, and landscaping. So uh, landscaping would be used to enhance the property and complement the architectural character of the contributing structure and also the adjacent pedestrian environment. Uh, however, the proposed mix of metal and chain link fencing is inconsistent with our design review guideline manual. Um, it, we don't like to mix fencing types and also we would require some form of architectural relief. Um, so uh, distinctive architectural features. So previous unpermitted alterations have cha changed some of the few distinctive architectural features of this historic warehouse. Uh, I mean, function is always going to take precedence over form in a warehouse. It's, it's how we use things, right? Um, and retention of the few defining architectural details is needed to retain the historic integrity of the building. So um, the original dimensions and appearance of windows and doors, uh, that would probably get us back to where we need to be. Um, so here are our standards of review. 
adherence to the secretary's guideline. Um, now, it is not the, the property, I would like to specifically talk about um, the secretary's guideline number one. It is not usually the purview of this board to think about use except in this particular context. Um, so I'm gonna read this. A property shall be used for its historic purpose or be placed in a new use that requires minimal change to the defining characteristics of the building and its site and environment. So up until 2009, this was a sponge packing plant. <laughs> this was a histor this is a historically, uh, this was a warehouse district. It was all sponge packing and drying and processing. So um, this is going to be a change of use, but it's a commercial use to a commercial use. And uh, I would think a coffee house would be <coughs> less stinky than a sponge warehouse. That's just my personal Please say that last part again. <laughs> a coffee house what? A coffee house would be less intrusive than a sponge packing warehouse. So I think it's, it's, it's a less intensive use. Let's just put it that way. We're going from a, a more industrial use to a commercial use. Um, but all of the, all of the, the guidelines, um, the secretary's guidelines uh, really are applicable to this project. It's a, it's a big project. So particularly the removal of historic materials. Um, the distinctive features, um, repairing rather than replacing, um, not destroying historic materials, um, new additions undertaken in a manner um, to where they would not uh, compromise the essential form and function of the historic property. I think we're fine on that one. Um, the HPB must determine that the project as proposed is the most feasible and best way to preserve the overall historic character and longevity of the property to meet the intent of the Secretary's standards. So, <laughs> staff is recommending approval um, of application 2303 as conditioned. Um, and we've got quite a bit of conditions. So unpermitted work must be remedied in consultation with planning and zoning and building development staff. Uh, windows and doors must approximate historic architectural features and require staff review and approval. Um, the historic window and door dimensions need to be restored. Uh, wall signage shall not exceed 15.7 square feet in area, and that's just out of our code. Um, fencing has to be consistent with uh, the design review guideline manual. And we can do that, make sure that that's okay through staff review. Um, and then as usual, the certificate of approval will expire in three years if there's no building permit issued. And with that, if you have any questions. Any questions? Uh, so normally we would not this, this committee would not be looking at usage, but you're saying in this case we are? In, we have, we, could in we have every, a letter here from 15 neighbors. Right, and that's kind of why I pointed it out. No, in, you should always be looking at this guideline, and it's very specific, narrow interpretation of considering the use. So we know the historic use was a sponge warehouse, and is this new use going to require minimal change to the defining characteristics of the building, its site, and its environment? So you need to think about its historic environment as a sponge warehouse in a sponge warehouse district, its historic use up until fairly recently as a sponge warehouse, um, and if this proposed project is only making minimal changes to the defining characteristics of that building's historic use. So just to clarify, you're not changing the use, you're not technically considering the use because it's no longer being used in a historical manner. So the historical manner that it was used in was to take care of and dry the sponges. Since you're no longer, it's no longer being used for that for well over a decade now, um, that's really technically not part of your consideration because you can't maintain that use there anymore, right? But it is still a commercial use, so you're not changing the zoning on the property. This is the, the use of going from um, a sponge drying factory 
to um, a coffee house is still within the zoning of this particular property, so you're not making any change to that. You're, you're only considering the use in the context of the building, not as to what the property is actually going to be used for by the applicant, now, now if to, that helps. Now to <laughs> further convolute that, <laughs> it, it, is not per, it is not the use as a coffee shop is not permitted by right. It is a conditional use, and that use will be heard by the Planning and Zoning Board, and that most definitely is their purview. So yes. they would still go to Planning and Zoning no matter yeah. what we, well. No matter what we say. Yes. Yeah. So you can approve it, and planning and zoning could still say no okay. to the conditional use. Essentially. Oh. So these, these 15 neighbors should know that they should be going to zoning and planning. That's not our, mm -hmm. not our purview. And just for the record, uh, you're offering the city staff on this file for the board's consideration in this matter. No, I'm not because I forgot uh, my last slide. We did, okay. at the time of making the presentation, I did get one public response, and then at your desks, uh, we, we later received another public response to this. Um, however, it, the public responses do not appear to be pertinent to what we are reviewing here today. Okay. okay. Uh, any more questions from the board? Hearing none. The applicant, you want to? Okay. That's what I was going to say. You're more than welcome to share the pictures, but once you give them to the board, then the city will have to keep them. Okay. Okay. It just, you know, pictures are just a. Thank you. Words. Thank you. My name is Kenneth Saya. Um, <clears throat> I'm 403 Roosevelt Boulevard, directly across the street from this building, which is why I ended up buying it. Just, um, bought that property and fell in love with this one for some strange reason. I don't know why. <laughs> um, we bought this building about two years ago. Uh, at the time, it was owned by a, uh, basically a bridge painting company, and it was pretty heavily industrial which um, didn't sit right with, with some people, uh, but I got to be friends with a guy and told him, hey, when you get ready to sell it, I'm interested. And originally, my intention was purely just to, to uh, tinker with uh, Model Ace, which they're out there, I'm sure you all have driven by, you've seen them sitting out there. And that was pretty much it. It was just gonna be private use, I wasn't gonna worry about it. And then, I don't know, the, one, the idea came up one day to see if we could put a coffee shop in there. And, and as a Caroline said, it is a conditional use of the property. It doesn't go outside the zoning parameters. <clears throat> the, uh, a lot of the, you know, I, I mean, I've pretty much bought this building as is. I do know some of the history of some of the stuff that's been done. Um, and 100% and will take responsibility for changing the door panels out on the south side. Um, the, if you, um, <coughs> all right, let me go back to, oh, well, let me go, let's, let's talk about the roof, because that's like the third picture in. No, it's not the third picture in. All right, F fourth picture in is, the, is, uh, is one of the um, like windows, doors, how, whatever you want to call them. They were really just access points to the loft. This building, from what I understand from some of the old Greek gentlemen, the second floor was all sponge cribs. And I don't know whether this was used for ventilation, whether it was used for loading the sponges, whatever, but you can see the louvered vents on the back. When that got put in, I do not know. Um, and it's functional. It works. In the summertime, it's great to be able to turn it on because it pulls the air right through the building. Um, 
taking that out and replacing it with a piece of, uh, you know, with, with a sheet metal flap, because essentially that's what I think it was. I don't see, I don't really see where we gain anything from that. The fan is, uh, there's actually a picture of the fan in there if you flip another picture back. Um, there, on the south side, there is a patch that is right after the fan. And it is just a seat metal patch like probably the 30 or 40 other patches that are in that building. It's been an industrial building for 118 years. As you can expect, things have changed. It's not like the day it was built. Um, though I think in, in the general aspects of it, it is pretty much the same. Um, behind that patch is this picture, which you can see clearly that the purling Perlin and the studs have not been, as far as I can tell, I think they're the original studs and Perlins. They, they match everything else in there. They have not been cut. So there whatever was a window there. I believe it was really just a sheet metal access for, mm -hmm. uh, for ventilation. The, um, there's one not far down from it that's about this big. You can tell that used to be an old stove because there's a hole cut there. So, you know, there are, you know, many, many of these these changes to it. Um, the, 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 relevant, the historical relevance of them, I, I don't really see it myself, but um, then I'm gonna go back, just moving through all these, these modifications. There's a window. Um, that one, I think, that is, the, that is the west side. It's a small window. It actually goes to, to, the, to the existing bathroom. Um, I haven't done it yet, but I've been wanting to put a strip of wood to emulate a glazing style on the window, like I have on the front door or the west side entrance door, which is not original either, but it's old, it's antique, and, uh, and, I, and it actually has a transom above it. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I don't know when all this stuff was done. I'll tell you what I've done. I put the, the wooden glazing strips on that and, and, the, and the front two panel uh, doors to give it that 1920s because it's, I mean, it's effect, effectively a 1920s building and uh, put those in. Somebody's put, you know, then these look like they're from the 20s sashes made this one window out. Um, that is, that's this picture that I'm looking at, if y'all can see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember that one. Oh, please make sure you stay close to the mic so we can get you. Thank you, sir. The, um, there's another window on the south side. That's a picture of the existing window. I, I mean, that's the way it was, you know, when I've got it. I haven't done anything with it. It's got steel bars over it, which are, which are quite frankly hideous. Um, then they are really 1920s window sashes that are just kind of cobbled together and stuck in a cut hole. Um, I haven't gotten to do anything with that one because truthfully I would need to build a complete new window frame which I would like to match to the window, the other window on the, on the um, south side of the building. I would like to do that. And the, these sashes actually do match the same size of the window that is there so it would be perfect. I've actually additionally purchased sashes and would like I'm, I'm not ready to do it at this point, but at, at some point I would like to get y'all's approval just to go ahead and put another window in farther in the warehouse that matches the other two. Um, but I, I'm not asking for that approval at this point. The further back is the, uh, and it's the one with the, is the, this is the one with the transom window. This is the west side window that most people consider the primary entrance. It, I don't believe it ever really was. It was because that was more of an industrial, had a one panel, six by eight. Why they just, you know, back then they made these big, huge six by eight door panels. I don't know. Um, that door, that's the door that's currently used as the primary entrance. This is the one where I put the, the wood strips in there to emulate the, the glazing the glazing bars. Uh, behind that is the subject door. <laughs> this is the west side door. 
or the south side door that, that faces Park Street. This is what I took out. Now, uh, no disrespect to anybody here. It was, to me, just a repair operation. Um, I found these other door panels, and uh, they you know, would allow me to have two operators. So I basically took that old door, took it apart to replace this one single panel. Um, there's two things with that. One, it was no longer operable. I mean, you can literally see that there's no way that door ever did anything in recent years. The, the idea uh, of doing the two panels is, is a, one of necessity, really. And, and again, I did the wood glazing strips to give it that 1920s look. God knows, I have no idea how old this door is, but it's old. I had to take it completely apart. Some of the wood that I replaced, I actually used a torch and wire wheel to, to put the patina back into it so it would match. You can't even imagine how hard it is trying to make stuff match on stuff that could be as much as 100 years old. It, you know, it takes a lot of time and patience. I think I worked on those doors for two weeks mm. to get that look. The, the two panel is a necessity just from the use that we're, we're looking to make this into a, a, you know, the coffee shop, which I think is very, um, very community centric. Everybody loves that place and, and this was a way for us to share it. The, the, two, the two operating doors is, is a must. I, I, you can't have people coming in and out of a six foot wide swinging door. I mean, you can imagine that's just not practical. Um, so, I mean, we can go through every painstaking detail, but the reality is I have no problem getting with the, with the, with the building department on, on any issues. They can come in and inspect it. I'll take stuff apart if they want to see it to inspect it. I don't have a problem with that. But the, but the, the you know, the missing windows, I don't see the point. There's, there's no function for them. Um, you know, the one, obviously is slightly different. I don't really think it affects the character or the historic value of the property. Uh, the, the big doors on the loft, I just don't see the impact myself. I mean, the door, I mean, the building still has that, that character. I don't even know why everybody likes it. I, I, don't, I had to ask myself that. So why are you so attracted to this thing? It's a big chunk of steel, and for whatever reason, everybody loves it. I can't explain it, it makes no sense. But uh, I, I really do think the, the overall of this building that my wife and I really do truly love is uh, it's, it's, it's preserved. It's, it's never been damaged by anything, any utilitarian. That's the thing is it's utilitarian and it still maintains that utilitarian look even with at the addition of these doors and windows and whatever people have done to it, it hasn't lost that. You know, it's not something you want to call your house. It's, a, it's, a, it's an industrial building that has somehow managed to live for 118 years. And I think this project will, will keep it around and, and keep people interested in it. We found a sponge gauge in, in the attic or up in the little bit of loft that's left in there. Um, Mr. Hulis, uh well, uh, Anthony Hulis, um his father is an old Old, old timer from around here. He explained, he, start, he put me on overload. It was like drinking from a fire hose when he started going on about what sponges went through there, what the gauge was used for. We're gonna hang that stuff up. I have literally hundreds of pictures that we're gonna hang up in there for people to see. Um, the, uh, the, the, you know, the, uh, the, I've just got so many artifacts um, and I recently became a board member on the uh, Tarpon Springs Hist Historical Society, and uh, which you all, we'd love to have you all come join that because we don't have enough board members. But, uh, but anyway, that, um, that place over there, it's the train station, if, if you're not aware, that, that is full of, it, the, it's got so much of the history in the families of Tarpon Springs. It, it's just incredible what's in there. The, what, that, what, that building holds so much of Tarpon Springs history. Mm -hmm. it's, it's incredible. So um, I guess in conclusion, I, the biggest thing, like I said, I have no problem getting with the, with the building department. 
I'm going to have to anyway. I mean, my whole intention for this is for you guys to hopefully give me a yes, and I got to go pull a permit. So things are going to get straightened out there. The, um, but I really would, you know, one, it's a matter of budget, and one, the building, there's really nothing wrong with the building the way it is. People have given that thing a lot of love over the years. It is what it is. I don't see trying to go backwards in time as going to serve any purpose for anybody. So I would like to just move forward with the project and the building as is, with the caveat that I go get, you know, want to go get my permits, we go get the building people and go do a tour. So, okay. hmm. anybody have any questions for me? Okay, any questions? So, no? just to clarify, you're not building a Starbucks, right? Oh, no. No, no, no. That, that lady right there will shoot me. We are talking limited hours, and, um, you know, there's, we've made many concessions just between the two of us and uh, my contractor and, and talking with the TRC and everything. Um, you know, and I think, you know, well, some of the stuff kind of griped me at first. It, in the end result is I really like what we have. And I think it'll be a great addition to the community. Okay. Yeah, thank, thank you very and much. Oh. Yeah. You've probably seen the preliminary staff recommendations. Yes. And you're comfortable with all of that? Well, yeah, well, can, yeah, that's something we need to talk about because, like, the fence, I'm not quite sure on the fence. The, that's a, it's a, it's, I mean, it's going to be aluminum technically, but it's, it's a wrought iron fence. And it's, really to give it that quaint cafe. Um, I don't see is where it's, it's period correct. I don't see where it detracts from the building. I, I know the, uh, you know, I know it doesn't match the chain link fence, but the, the chain link fence belongs to the industrial history of the building. The, the wrought iron fence belongs to the cafe. I, I mean, I've seen plenty of historical buildings with nice wrought iron fences around for traffic control to keep people where they're not supposed to go or whatever. I, mm. I'm not sure I understand the conflict there. I mean, if you can explain it to me, then I can, maybe we can come up with another option. But um, I will say one thing. We, I do own the property across the street, and one of the caveats, those are commercial. The houses that are across the street, that is commercial property. It is WD-1A. And one of the caveats was to put this six-foot tall uh, iron fence. I don't know where that came from when um, Mr. Weichel was negotiating all that, <clears throat> but I do know that was one of the things I had to agree to put up this, this iron fence. And I said, no problem. I thought it looked nice. And this kind of, it's be the same kind of fence. It kind of fits with the neighborhood. Um, the, uh, I, I don't know what else to say about it other than that. I mean, I, if somebody can make me understand why that's not not okay then then you know we'll, at least we know what, when we walk out of here what we got to do to come up with something different I, I think we've approved uh different uh materials for fences in the past but they've had some sort of break in between am i am i that was wood length yeah what was it that was wood length i think the rules that we yeah, have 50 foot. Uh, it was a 50 length. foot, foot length, every, yeah. if it was more than 50 feet there had to be something but i thought it was that um, that uh, the the big white uh, condo that was a church or something. I thought there were two different uh, fencing. The one that's against the staff's recommendations. Yes, you did. <laughs> um, yeah, I do. Remember the, remember what she said. <laughs> against staff recommendations. Against staff <laughs> staff recommendations. Yes, staff did not um, recommend approval of the two. Different materials. I'm talking about. Well, the, well I do you remember what you're talking about. <laughs> Phil, you mentioned a break in the <laughs> yeah, fence. I that. Um, there is a break. It's the building. I, I mean, the two fences, mm -hmm. while you can stand on the south side and see both of them, they are not in even close proximity. Um, we're going to keep the, the black mesh uh, maintained, um, which to me, kind of makes it disappear. I, I mean, personally, I don't like chain link fence. <clears throat> I don't know why anybody would put one up around their house, and I hope I'm not offending anybody. I mean, because they, they have that industrial look and feel. 
but the um, you know with the black mesh over it it really just kind of disappears back there mm -hmm. and I don't think it'll be in conflict with the with the uh, wrought iron looking fence and that and that is really is that 40 feet long or we have We've moved that fence around so much, I don't even remember how long it is. Is it about 40 feet, Robin? Yeah. Yeah, it's about 40 feet long. Hmm. Okay. What, excuse me, what about the street? That street really floods. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'll be happy to talk <laughs> about that. I, we have had the solution, the, I say we, the city, have had the solution for that for years we're not talking months years right. and the I, I keep I, well I, I was told that it will probably get financed this year which means I think the engineering I don't know I can't say that I don't know if, I've been told so many things that I don't even even know anymore do you, you know at all it is a Well, Tony, Tony told us um, it's on the five year. I don't tell you. I don't like it. I, to be honest with you, we suffer with it because, uh, in, in fact, uh, Mr. Plaza, his uh, Plaza, his uh, his house is on these two doors down from me. We literally king tides. It's up to my knees. Mm -hmm. And. Honestly, I bought the property, so I'm not complaining. I, I bought the property knowing that was a condition. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that I'd have, and, I will, and, I, and I'm not complaining about tarp and overall, but you always have the f few people that they're just stupid. I'm sorry for lack of a better term. They go plowing down the street at 30 miles an hour. Right. Our cars in the driveway literally get covered in salt water. Mm -hmm. I, um, I, mine, I have the white rock around that corner. The reason I did that was because the grass won't grow there. So that was as close as I could get my grass to the street. Well, didn't know I should have, you know, well, <laughs> I don't know if, if granite would even work. The problem I have with that is now I have to go rake the limestone rock out of my grass every time we have a king tide because people drive by and they push the water the, and so hard that it grabs the gravel and it pushes it all up into the mm -hmm. into the yard and so i mean I, how's that i mean it's, well i don't know how it's going to affect the business i do know that the city plans to fix it um the the well i think one of the things i've put in here is the riprap i want to put some sizable riprap along that corner by by the fire hydrant i'm going to have to talk to the fire department about how close I can get to that for their sake. But that's just really to mitigate the water from the same problem I'm just describing at my house. And uh, I think it'll look nice. It's a waterfront community. Everybody's used to seeing riprap on the water. So I, I think that'll help. Um, I, I, the parking lot, as per the drawing, is pretty much the same. We are doing geologicals, and we're we're considering moving the retention pond, which really doesn't affect you guys. But we're going to move that in the back, so it won't even be seen um, if we do that. Can you leave that sign, the sponges sign, on the building? Oh yeah, let's talk about that. That um, I like that, but the problem is um, the sign that we want to put up there. One. When whoever did the door, it, it's partially covered at the bottom anyway, and I want to take it and just shrink it a little bit and move it over and down um, from the uh, maybe maybe only down about a foot and off to the left of the door opening a little bit mm. um, because I guess I'm going to have to sell sponges because everybody asks me that. I probably get asked I don't know three four times a week. Do you, are you open? Do you sell sponges? And I'm like, <laughs> no, I said, that's on the building, but I don't even sell anything yet. But yeah, I'd like to retain that, and, uh, and I want to paint the ER mirrors. Um, I, I cannot find the picture, but it, I've had a picture one time where it was on the top left corner, not real big, about like that, on the corner of the building. 
and it said ER mirror sponge, uh, sponge mm -hmm. packing. I want to do that, paint it black, and then hand sand it down to the aluminum paint to give it that faded patina look. Mm -hmm. So I'd like your approval to do that. And then the sign that we want would actually be made, it wouldn't be 3D, it would be just thin uh, laser cut metal of a, model, of, of a Model A splashing through the water. It's kind of our play on the whole high tide. Mm -hmm. We're trying to, make, trying to make fun out of that whole situation. Good. So I really like this fan. Are you going? This has nothing to do. Are you going to use this as decor? Oh, it's, I have no intention of taking it out. If you'll let me keep it, it's cool. It is cool. I, um, there's picture and on on and uh, I didn't go into the roof. The roof is the original roof, best I can tell. Could that change somewhere in 118 years? I don't know. But it is the same patina on the bottom side of that roof. It ama looks amazingly good, by the way. Um, is the walls? Now the outside's what suffers. That's where the galvanized wore off. That roof, from pictures I've seen, actually over at the train station, was rusted really bad. And from what I understand, the last owner, or maybe the owner before, took a saw and just trimmed the end off, and then painted it with what everybody's seen is the, it's the tarry kind of uh, pitchy aluminum paint. And that's what they did. It painted the whole roof. Um, it only leaks one, one or two spots. <laughs> so. And, they, I, and I believe they painted the, uh, the whole thing aluminum. So, which I, I think is fine. As close as you're gonna get to, to a galvanized building. Anything else? Anything else? Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, it. thank you. <clears throat> okay, let's see what we got. Okay, any public comment on this? Sure. Okay, okay. well, we have yeah. a young lady over here first. Okay. Uh, public comments on this. Again, just remember that they should be relevant to the matters that this board is considering. Um, and then also that they are limited to four minutes per their rules of procedure. Thank you. Uh, Laura Slocum, 69 West Park Street. Um, I just, um, I realized that the previous owner, uh, Gus Tarakis, was never allowed to make any changes to the historic building. Um, I understand the excitement of somebody wanting to start a business, but um, I really hope that the residents in this area are considered. Uh, we are a neighborhood. Person came along with the letter. I'm in agreement with it, I signed it. Um, there's a lot of traffic issues. I know it doesn't all pertain to this, but it sounds like there's a lot of changes to the historic building. That doesn't sound like there's gonna be much to the historic nature of the building that will not be changed. Part of the quaintness of living in Tarpon is having the historic landmarks unchanged. We've already heard testimony from someone that, you know, unfortunately some of the downtown area wasn't allowed to keep that nature. So I would just urge you to keep that in mind. I think it's unfortunate that you're required to vote on these before the business permit. That seems kind of backwards because obviously if someone's gonna put the money into building a warehouse, building a parking lot and all of that, who's gonna deny the business permit? So it kind of leaves us as the residents with not much of a, a right, I feel. The other concern is if this building is allowed to do that, we have another building at the very beginning of the street that used to be a packing plant, so how many more years is that gonna be a business? And then we have businesses on both sides of the street which already has way more traffic, people coming up the wrong way. Um, I don't have all the answers, but I just think that this is gonna draw too many people driving more vehicles and it's just not gonna keep the historic nature of that building. That's also so close to St. Michael's. And anyway, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 
How are you doing? Uh, Bill Plaza, 419 Roosevelt Boulevard. Uh, I moved uh, across the street from the Sponge Building in uh, 2016 and I've been to this board meeting uh, several times with the previous owner that uh, promised to do some beautifications and upkeep, which uh, unfortunately you guys don't have any power to force anybody once you even approve it. You know, that's, and that's bad because, you know, uh, people get excited about uh, certain things and uh, just like you do, you know, you said, oh, this is great, but then nobody can do anything about it even though you approve it. So the previous owner ha has not done any improvements that they promised. Uh, the chain link fence that went in, uh, he put this uh, bl black cloth. Uh, that's not a historic uh, uh, way of really guarding a place. Uh, I think that what a, a current owner proposes is something that, that probably will fit the period a lot better than the chain link fang fence itself. Uh, it would be also consistent with uh, with the fences across the street. Uh, as far as the business part, you know, first of all, we're not gonna stop the traffic coming through Roosevelt whether there's a coffee shop or not. People will stop by, I don't think it's gonna be a destination. Maybe the current owner hopes this is gonna be a dest destination, but it's, it's not. He puts the Model A over there, people stop by all the time. You can't stop that. Uh, I think that at least the pro proposed uh, project, the scope of it, it preserves the building. It preserves the heritage of uh, Tarpon Springs, and it shows that what it was before. We have many sponge buildings over here that, that nobody wants to do anything with it. They're all falling apart. So in your consideration, I know that you're not looking at the usage of it. However, prior to this owner, there was a building uh, b uh, bridge b uh, repair uh, place. Was that consistent with the historic value of, of this uh, town? No way. So if somebody wants to preserve it and show it off as a heritage of this town, I think that we should be applauding somebody to do that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, anybody else? Okay. Uh, Public comment? Rebuttals? Uh, yes, just a couple of points. Um, so the applicant noted that um, didn't see what we were to gain by retaining the original loft doors while well, we'd be retaining a historic feature of the structure that pays homage to what it used to function at. Uh, doesn't see the historic relevance of the building. Well, this building is individually listed on the National Register, which means it was, it was listed before we had a National Historic District. Um, this building is very significant to the history of town, so I take exception with that. Um, the applicant noted that steel bars are hideous. Well, in the Florida Master Site file, it's noted as one of its distinctive features that again pays homage to its um, previous use as an industrial sponge packing uh, warehouse. Um, the applicant noted that the door was no longer operable. Um, I, I, I can understand that. Um, if proper procedure had been followed and he had uh, brought an application in front of this board to replace that door, Maybe we could have talked about a custom door that replicated the look of the original door but has two doors in it, but that, that wasn't followed. Um, doesn't see the point of maintaining the windows or loft doors in there. No, I get to talk as long as I want. <laughs> um, doesn't see the point of the keeping the dimensions of the windows or loft doors. Well, that's what was originally there and that's one of your main points of, of um, review standards. Um, and uh, again, um, the applicant spoke of wanting to hang all these pictures, uh, paying homage to the history, um, but didn't really see the historic relevance of the building. The last point I'd like to make is uh, the applicant kept um, pointing out that he had uh, put this faded patina look and a distressed look on the uh, unpermitted uh, doors that he put in. Um, and I'd like to note that, you know, one of your, one of your guidelines is that, um, 
that we shall not attempt to create an earlier appearance than the original date of construction. Changes uh, that have taken place over the course of time are evidence of history, and the de development of the subject property may have acquired some, some significance in their own right. So some of these historic changes that took place over time in the 20s, 30s, 50s, 40s, who knows, even later than that, may have their own significant, but we shouldn't try and make thing, new things look like they're old. That's, uh, that's in your guidelines. And so that's about it. Thanks. Okay. Any questions? Over. Give them in. Oh. oh, yeah, yeah. You're coming up next. <laughs> okay, uh, are you done? I, I oh. didn't mean to. I think I was misunderstood about the significance. I, I, it was not toward the building at all. I mean, I think I've pretty much shown you that I love and respect the building. There are sheet metal holes that we're talking about. And actually, you can still see the sheet metal hole above the, the, the current door in there, in there now. I, I'm not really sure what we're going to gain by putting a functional, it's not one that's not even practical now with the structure the way it is, to try and put a functional, whatever that was, door, flap, whatever. The, the other, the, uh, the one in the back where the fan is, isn't, you really can't even see it from the street. I mean, you, yes, you can see the fan from the street, but I, I just, I don't understand the, the historical re relevance of a piece of sheet metal versus a, a, a fan that actually looks like it belongs in the building because it is old. Mm. Um, the, uh, uh, as far as the, is the, the, the door goes, I believe that door was in the building. Um, and I, I kind of take issue with the fact that I'm not trying to make that door anything it's not. When you restore patina, you can't just take and put a new piece of wood in a, in a door that is literally, I mean, looks like it's been sandblasted. You just can't do it. It looks hideous. You know, it would be like taking brand new sheet metal and trying to patch that building. You can't. It, it's going to, you might as well see it. You'll see it from 30,000 feet. So my intention was to restore the, the, the look and feel of the building was no disrespect to the building, no disrespect to, to the board that I did what I did. Mm -hmm. um, and I will tell you just for some history, um, I started out on this building a year and a half ago. This is an arduous process. Mm -hmm. Went to Pat, uh, Patricia McNeese, who I love and adore. I'm not trying to throw her under the bus, but I said, wanted to start the process. She said, I don't think that's historic as far as it's not in the historic district. And there was some confusion with the maps, and I'm sure she can defend herself on this. So we went for almost a year. In fact, my, my contractor will attest to this. I've got emails that show where it was and then it wasn't. So really, during the period that I did that door, the building had no historical significance. We were actually happy that the door, uh, I mean that the uh, the building ended up being historical because it has some connotations with it as far as building because of the age and the fact that it is historically significant I don't have to worry about the elevation of the building it's grandfathered in if it hadn't have been it it probably would ended up putting me in a situation if it hadn't been historic that it would have been cheaper to tear it down mm -hmm. because there's no way you can take a building that, that that's that old and bring it up to, to today's codes so it was on again, off again, things happen. Sorry about it. Well, like I said, it was no disrespect to, to you guys, to, to you, Caroline, or, or to Tarpon Springs. Thank you. I understand. Thank you. Okay. Caroline? I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Just, you know, I, I hope uh, whatever the board decides, if, if you decide approval, that we'll just uh, work with the applicant to have the most sensitive um, okay. Repairs that we can get. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, are we ready for a motion? Yes. Mm. We have a motion? Okay. Hey, we want to talk about it first? 
No, I think we have to make the motion and then talk about it. Huh? Don't we have to make the motion and then discuss well, it? Well, we kind of skipped that last time. We did, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> I, can I, can yeah. I ask a question? Sure enough. Okay. Okay. Is it a possibility of keeping the exterior of the building and fixing it from the inside out yeah. and keep the tin, the original tin? There's that possibility, yeah. There is? Okay. Well. Do you hear that? But, th yeah, but it, that, I don't know where you're going with this. Yeah, I don't think because he's changing the outside. Yeah. The, the, he's not changing the outside. He's not, yeah, he's not he's removing the tin. putting on new material. I'm sorry, you do have to come up to the microphone. So oh, you're talking about, oh, hold, 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 no, you're talking about grandfathering and what you've already done. Yeah, well, not what I've done. Keep, what's keep coming. Oh, what's, what's, what's coming. been done, okay. <laughs> okay. Yep. Yeah, so what's been done. Okay, okay, uh, gotcha. that, That's what I'm asking yeah. for. That way, then all I gotta do is worry about getting building department, get it up to code. Okay. Would not substantially change, uh, actually not really change, the only thing, the only change is to that building as the way you see it right now, the only changes that we're really proposing is the ADA ramp, which we tried everything. There was no way to get it anywhere right. but in the front of, you know, it, it, one of the front. I mean, it's got two frontages. Yeah. Right. It, we're, we want to build it. I want to build it, try to do weathered wood, um, you know, weather, tre weather the treads, um, put a, a black iron pipe uh, handrail for you know for things to meet code, but make it look period correct. Okay. Um, and again, I don't think that's a misrepresentation of the building. Um, to me, an industrial building with a ramp almost kind of fits anyway. Okay. Um, but I'm not proposing any any changes to the building. I'm, that's what I'm asking you to accept it the way it is, other than just fixing what's broke. Okay. 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 Uh, okay. I'm good. Let's just start talking about this because you know. Uh, first off, there's a couple of things I see. One is we have a utilitarian building. Okay, it's gone through a lot of changes over the hundred and some odd years it's been mm -hmm. going. Okay, I think we need to say okay, from here on. You know, is everything stays. It's there right now. Okay, and then when it comes time to change out something, then you negotiate and try and stay within uh, the, the historical end of it. But I think we have to have a, particularly with this building, we have to have a starting point. You know? You know what I'm saying? No. Huh? So, so. Um, what I just want to clarify for the board is what the actual request is for per the materials that we have and then to make it clear for you all what the conditions are. Right. So what the actual certificate of approval is for is to construct a new 1,200 square foot warehouse on the property, not tear this one down or change it, but construct a new 1,200 square foot warehouse, add ADA ramp to the front entry, paver walkways, drive apron and ADA parking space, fenced paver, patio and grassy dog area, relocate fencing along Roosevelt to create a gravel parking area, install riprap to offset high tide wake, create a retention area, new signage and convert existing gravel areas to defined parking spaces. That is what your approval request is for. Now okay. the conditions no. are in addition to that. That doesn't address the unpermitted work. So there was unpermitted work that was done on this property and you all have to decide um, as part of your motion whether or not you're going to make it a condition that their unpermitted work has to be redone in accordance with um, the historic preservation standards, right? Um, so that's one of the conditions that's that's listed in there, is Run to address the unpermitted doors and windows. Run that by me one more time. Okay, the you're saying that the building 
has got to be brought up to, to uh, prison standards or? No, what I am saying is that one of the conditions that staff is recommending is for the um, unpermitted work on the doors and windows um, to be redone in accordance with historically accurate standards. So the condition here that says unpermitted work must be remedied in consultation with planning and zoning and building development staff. Um, and that the windows and doors must approximate historic architectural features and require staff review and approval. So those two conditions in here, what you're, you're actually, and then the third one too, the historic window and door dimensions will be restored. So the first three conditions that staff is recommending is actually to address the unpermitted work and to make, to sort of retrofit the unpermitted work so that it's in accordance with the um, historical accuracy of the facade of the building. So that's no. what those three conditions are addressing. What they're asking is this work was already done, mm -hmm. okay, without a permit from the city? Correct. Do they need a permit from the city? They to do did that? need a permit. They were supposed to get a permit. And when staff gave um, their presentation, um, they mentioned that they were going to go through this process rather than the code enforcement process and that those first three conditions would remedy the non compliance. I think either way that they eventually, even if you leave the conditions, even if you pass this without those first three conditions, they would still have to go back and get after the fact permits. Mm -hmm. um, after the fact building permit? Or correct. Would have, or would they have to come through us too? Um, see, that's, there's a little bit of a legal conundrum here because yeah. ultimately they really would need your approval to do that anyway otherwise you would just be requiring them to put it back in exactly the same way that it was yeah so well, ultimately that's, you kind of have I'm, to address that's this I'm, that's why i'm wondering why it's the, with these right. staff view right well if, if you do it in this manner um what it does is it um allows them to um, address it um, without then coming back for the after the fact permit approval. So. Okay. Yep. Yep. So the staff recommendations cover, cover, Caroline's covered that in her recommendations, what you're worried about. I think so. I think Caroline's covered that in those recommendations. Mm -hmm. um, I think the only one that's is a little vague, or not vague, but you know, I could go back and forth is the fencing, fencing, which the fencing across the street, which is kind of the entrance to that street, if you think about it. So it kind of makes that 90 degree turn. It's wrought iron here, wrought iron here. They're taught they're proposing putting wrought iron in the front, which I get it's two types of fencing, but it's it is an industrial building and I've seen hmm. lots done that way. But it kind of creates an entrance to that street that almost gives it an identity. So I'm, I so if I were to say I'm going to make a motion, I would make a motion to accept what Caroline's saying with the exception of the fencing. And, and actually, I was thinking of that too, and just changing uh, the number five to saying fencing will require staff review mm -hmm. and do away with uh, consistent with uh, City of Tarpon Spring design review guidelines. And it's still, the fencing would still have to be reviewed by staff. And I guess what I'm hoping is that they would come to some sort of agreement on a mixture of fencing. Um, that, does that work? I would like staff to clarify that. Okay, so when they go for their building permit, uh, that permit will come to me to be reviewed to make sure that it is in compliance with whatever you agree to today. Mm -hmm. So I'd need you to clarify um, to clarify on the staff, I, I don't have a problem with the wrought iron. I, I actually much prefer it to the chain link. It's much mm -hmm. nicer. But it, in the design review guideline manuals, it says that you shall not mix too tight. That's not recommended. So um, I'd like to see the wrought iron used all the way around. But if you are okay with mixing it, I'll, I can make sure in my review of their fence permit that 
the new portion, um, the new wrought iron is up to uh, the guidelines. Mm -hmm. okay. So perhaps you could say in, in your condition, um, with a condition that mixed fence materials are acceptable to the board or something like that. Okay. So we're are we ready for a motion? <laughs> you were born ready. Yeah. Can I make just a quick comment on that yeah. fence? The, the chain link fence would be minimalized to the back of the compound, pretty much out of public view. The one section between the new building and the old building would be, would be chain link. The, the one side of the building on the south side, um, that, I mean, we, we, need, a, we need a fence with the with the screen covering for like our dumpster i mean the dumpster has to be rolled out there's no way because of the overhead power lines and stuff that i can do a dumpster containment so it's a nice way of keeping keeping the commercial because you know there's still going to be a commercial aspect of that building it keeps that from the public view um, and the other fence like i said is completely away from that fence um, and and we can submit like stuff when we put the permit in, which I'm assuming we're gonna have to anyway, but what the actual design of that fence and what, what it's gonna look like. But it really is just, you know, our plan was just to put a wrought iron fence with posts around that perimeter of that patio area, that's it. Okay. Yes. My name's Tom Slocum. I live at 69 West Park Street also. Um, you guys were talking about this building itself and how I know some of you were worried about how they're going to make the changes of the building. My question is, is all the stuff he wants to do this, A, this patio, this 1,200 square foot building he wants to, what's that going to do to the integrity of the property? How is that going to change compared to what this actual historical building itself? Because it is a historical landmark because it has a stamp right on it. No matter what the squaring zone is, that building itself is a historical site. And one of the reasons we moved to this town was because of this historical site of this town. This town was not like what we lived in before. When my wife and I came here 12 years ago, we fell in love with this town because of all the historical site here. We drove around for hours, just looking at all the old buildings and seeing how the new stuff is changing. I get there's a new time. I get how things are moving forward, but this town needs to fight to keep the historic because that's what everybody comes to see. You wanna see new changes, updated stuff? Go down to Clearwater, go down to St. Pete's. That's all updated. This is a historic town and it needs to stay a historic town. Otherwise, we're just gonna be a big old city again and we're, we're gonna be no different than anybody else. Okay. So. Um, have you, I don't recall you standing earlier to be sworn in. Were you sworn in when other people were being sworn no, I, in? No, Can I, you please oh, yeah. raise your hand? Do you swear that the testimony that you just provided to the Historic Preservation Board was true and accurate to the, and within the best of your knowledge? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. So like I said, I get what he wants to do. I truly do. I just think that nothing against him because sometimes I think you gotta do whatever, but when you change and you add so much to that, because that's a big section of lot, and he's gonna really change it around there. And my problem is, is with that flooding, is gonna have so much problems down there, it's just gonna, For him to keep that area from flooding, he's gonna to have to do so much more work to it. It's gonna change the structure of this town. Mm. You know, and I, I'm just, I know you guys wanna make this town better, but there's nothing wrong with this town. <laughs> I love this town. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So don't let people push you to do what you want. You guys have always stayed structured, keeping this place historical. And once you start changing it, like you said the last time here, you know, well, we let these people change it back whenever it's now we're going to, at some point in time, we got to say no. We're going to mm -hmm. keep this town the way it is. You want to do it, whatever, that's fine. But keep it the way it is. You can fix the inside. You can redo the inside. But leave it on the outside of how it is.
because once you open up a flood or a little leak, it's going to flood open. The next thing you know, we're going to be St. Pete. So, all right. So let's see. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mr. Chairman, because um, that wasn't really a question, that really was additional testimony, um, I think that for due process considerations, you have to offer the city and the applicant um, time to rebut um, anything that was presented. Okay. Okay. And that's, that's at their discretion Airline? if they want to rebut that. Yeah, I, agree. Okay. I love Tarpon Springs, too. <laughs> I don't have I don't have any um, oh. I don't have any response to that. Well, to um, to to address the concern, uh, and I get it, I, I really do. Um, the new building, will, will, you know, obviously has an impact. That that's really this discussion is more for the the planning and zoning people. Um, we have engineered in and. We're, I'm actually tomorrow morning going to be doing with, working with a contractor to do the geologics. That's what the retention's for. That that so that the watershed off of that building is addressed in our plan. It's addressed for all, basically all the new construction that we plan to do for the property. We are not going to, but in, and more likely going to improve the the water off of that property as it is. Um, so that really shouldn't be a concern. Um, and the building really, uh, the new building, it, I mean, I couldn't put it any farther and make it disappear. Mm -hmm. So um, that, that's really much all I can say about that. Okay, thank you. Okay. You wanna redo it <laughs> or you want me to do it? <laughs> so um, I would recommend that we accept the staff recommendations Michelle. with the um, the fencing what I'm sorry what did you say oh I'm sorry I recommend that we accept staff recommendations with the one exception for item 5 accepting mixed use or mixed materials with the wrought iron does that cover it okay did I miss something so you should have to do it here second. seconded who seconded? I'll second. Okay. Look. Okay. And I, I just have a, a question. Um, <clears throat> can you repeat what you said about number five again? Just adding the adding the mixed the mixed materials, the rod iron being that we are okay. Okay with, with it. Yeah. yeah. We're okay with that. Okay. <sighs> okay. Okay. Uh, I don't have anything. Not, nothing else? Okay. Can we have a vote? Yes. So, should I clarify the um, motion? Yes. To yep. approve the application with staff recommendations, except that the board would allow the mixed fence materials. Correct. Okay. Correct. Ms. Dinoff? Yes. Ms. Hallett? Yes. Ms. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Mrazinski? Yes. Mr. Sprecher? Yes. Good. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Well, I, I, yeah, well, thank you. I, I really <laughs> do want. I, I really do want to thank you. Um, I. The, the problem I have with this is is trying to revert back to, the, the staff recommendations. Yeah. Um, the sun. The sign's going to cover up the one access, which the access is still there. It's just not functional. Uh, there, there's just a. Um, to your, go your, your case is over, and okay. we can't offer additional testimony. Okay. Well, All right, what, and we do ask, have two more cases. I got one, one question. What, what is my recourse here? Um, your I, appeal is to the Board of Commissioners within 30 days. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay one more. Oh, actually, we got two more. Two more. <laughs> Where did I lose it? So we're hearing uh, application 2310. Well, do we want to take a break yet? Do a yeah, do. Do you guys want to take a quick break? I think we're going to, yeah. You want a cookie? I don't want a cookie. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, can we take a break? Yes, you can. Yeah. Okay, yeah, because it's almost nine. All right, so you okay. want to do five minutes? Ten minutes. Ten minutes? Okay. Ten minute break.
sweet cookie. Mm. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> we got it. Okay, it's about, give me one more minute, then we'll go. Okay. Ten minutes is up. Mm -hmm. We're going to go on to <clears throat> application 2310. This is on Cypress. Street, uh, <coughs> residents, state staff. Okay, so um, this slide is showing uh, the location and context of uh, the subject property. Uh, it's located in the R60 Neighborhood Conservation District, district uh, surrounded by some other residential and government uses that we're currently in right now. Uh, here's its location in the local historic district. Uh, just another view of where the property is located in the context. Uh, so the applicant is seeking a certificate of approval to remove the existing addition, replace with a slightly larger footprint, replace windows, doors, siding, porch and porch supports, um, the existing metal roof with a new metal roof, and to add a dormer to the front facade at the contributing structure at uh, 455 Cypress Street. Uh, here's its location on the 1919 Sanborn map. And then here's the footprint in the 1926 Sanborn map. So you can see um, some of the porch closed off uh, in between those two times. Shows the difference there. Uh, here's the picture from the Florida Master Site file. <coughs> Uh, here's some of the neighboring properties for context. Uh, this is the west side of the subject structure and the facade. Uh, right there to the back, you can see the existing addition. Uh, there is a shingle under the metal. Um, uh, it's also noted in the Sanborn maps that it was originally shingle. Uh, here you can see that the original window sizes have been altered. Uh, I should note that the applicant is proposing to uh, restore the original window sizes. Um, here's some of the architectural features of the property, the uh, gable end loops, the steep pitched roof, um, the wood surrounds, uh, wood weatherboard, exterior fabric, uh, a center entrance, and a nearly full width porch. Uh, this is the proposed project. Uh, here's a site view of the proposed project. It shows how, uh, the, on, with those red lines there, how the um, existing addition would be slightly enlarged. Uh, these are the windows that the applicant is proposing. 
And here are your standards of review that we need to go over. Um, so new construction's consistency. Um, the only uh, issue I would have with that is that the dormer would alter the, the simple historic facade. Um, windows and doors, so uh, they've already been replaced and the applicant is proposing to restore them to their historic proportions and replicate the uh, materials, uh, at least the style. Um, neighborhood and district context, there would be a minor alteration to the streetscape by adding the dormer and a slight change in building mass by increasing that addition. Uh, the roof shape and texture, the, so the original roof was shingles that you can see underneath it but the structure has had a metal roof um, that is not inconsistent with the style for over 40 years. The shape of the roof would uh, be altered by the addition of the dormer. The size and massing would be slightly altered again by the en enlarged addition. Um, they're proposing to restore architectural features by restoring the historic proportions and replicating the historic style of the windows. Um, Vinyl windows are inconsistent with the period of construction. However, they look similar. Um, so uh, the only issue I, I would really have with this application is that the addition of the dormer is a conjectural feature inconsistent with the Secretary's Standard 3. And uh, vinyl windows are inconsistent with sandal Standard 6, um, but they are an improvement on the existing windows of the incorrect proportions. Uh, the proposed project would comply with city codes. Um, and here are some guidelines we have on the roofing material. So I would say that the subject property has been altered over time, but overall the project would return it to a more original appearance. Um, the earliest additions appear to have occurred in 1920s and uh, maintains, this maintains the evidence of the property's evolution over time. Um, the addition of a dormer could be interpreted as an attempt to create an appearance of a different period of development, um, as they are of more often seen on Queen Anne, neoclassical, and bungalow styles. Um, so uh, with respect to the roofing material, we, we could say that um, because it's not inconsistent with the style, uh, that could be acceptable. Um, so uh, the, the design review guideline manual also states that original roofing materials uh, were usually standing seam metal or asbestos shingles, um, and, and now many of them feature composition seam shingles, so we certainly don't want asbestos shingles. So uh, staff recommends approval uh, as conditioned. Um, so they should remove uh, the proposed dormer uh, to maintain the historic facade. Um, the final design should incorporate uh, wood surrounds. Um, the vents, just to clarify, the, the vents and loo should be maintained. And a certificate of approval will expire in three years if they do not get a building permit for the project. Okay, I'll take any questions. Okay, on the uh, building, in, building this one in 1910, 1920, with our uh, regs right here, at that time, they were borrowing uh, parts or some styling from the uh, uh, craftsman homes. Am I right? Um, I, I would say that a gable would be more consistent with a craftsman style home. Uh, and I would just note that the Florida Master Site file, site file for the subject property notes that the structure displays a simple form with a uh, little roof overhang and a steep pitch. So. Um, adding ornamentation would be a conjectural element. Okay. Because uh, a lot of the uh, craftsman style houses had the uh, domers on it. Yes, but this is a, this is a frame vernacular. Do we know if this dormer actually, other than decorative, does it serve a purpose? I mean, is it opening up the attic to usable space or... I'd let the applicant answer that. Okay, we'll wait for that. All right, thanks. Okay, any questions? Are you done? I'm done. Okay. Wait, I got a question. What is, what do you mean wood surrounds? Um, Was that referring to? I'm sorry, I must have missed it. So. 
Oh, you're talking about the trim around the trim the around. Yeah, okay. The, yeah, yeah. Okay. What's the trim? So see the the blue there in that picture. Mm -hmm. That's a wood surround. Okay, so that's not the siding then. We're not talking about siding. No, and and they're proposing to use um, a siding that would replicate the original materials. So. Okay. Why not buy me again? I've never heard that term before. That's what I'm wondering. Where is that wood now that you're talking about? So see the, the blue around um, the framing and the windows. Okay, so you're talking about the corner pieces and uh, yeah. uh, trim work like that. The trim. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Got you. And I, and I don't think the application said anything about removing that. just wanted to clarify that it should... Mm -hmm. Remain. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, the applicant. Hi, I'm Michael Waters, and uh, this is my wife, Marushka, but she didn't get sworn in, but if she has to speak, she can. I just want to thank uh, Caroline Lanford for her help and Pat Denise's help. Um, <clears throat> we came, we were tired. I've been retired three years, my wife four years, but probably five years ago we started realizing we're going to come to Florida in the winter and where were we going to go? And we decided it's going to be the West Coast. And we started looking here, Port Ritchie, uh, Dunedin. Dunedin uh, and every time we came back, when we came to Tappan Springs, we said, boy, this is whether we were together or, or this is where we want to be. And, uh, and we want to be in the downtown, the historic part. It just happened to be. And uh, we found this house three years ago. My wife found this house. <clears throat> and uh, it was that overgrown thing. And uh, I, I looked at it and I was like, oh my God. But um, <laughs> we ended up buying it. And uh, then I got an education. But before I bought it, I got an education too because as we were thinking about buying it, the, the real estate agent was telling us, well, no one's going to buy this house anyhow, you know. The zoning's been changed so it can be a duplex. The more I looked at it, the more I said, but it could be saved. It could be, could be fixed. And then I got an education on what it means to be contributing. And with a little bit of homework that I got help with these people, I found out when the addition was put on in 1960 and when the windows were changed in 1970. and uh, I don't know what, but I think that porch was done in 1960. Then I went down to that railroad station with the historic thing. I said, do you think there are any pictures of this house? Those are, that was a house that someone was a worker. There's, they, no one was up there taking pictures of those houses when those were built. But there'll be no photograph. You know, it'd be very hard to find one. So we just got a rendering. And uh, the reason we want that dormer on the front is it's the house it, it doesn't get a lot of light to begin with because it has such a the, the, the porch on the front and whatnot. We thought that would be a place to bring light into the house, you know, because we'd vault that up a little bit inside there so that that could get into the house. And we're not talking about trying to go up there and build something up there or anything. It's just a, a, another avenue to bring light into the house. Um, I, I don't even think I think it would be fixed. But maybe if we thought about it, we might have it so that it could open for ventilation so we don't have to, we're here in the winter, the less we have to use air conditioning or whatever, the more we want to use. That's why I want to put the windows back to the right size so we can naturally ventilate the house and actually make it a greener house than, than what it is now. So I put back the board and batten. I learned all about that and whatnot. So really to restore the house to what it was. And I, I was amazed that last storm is when that, part of the roof pulled off that there was asphalt under there. I would have made the assumption, oh, it was metal from day one, you know, and it's not. So, but if anybody has any questions, uh, I'll be more than glad to answer them. Okay, uh, just a couple questions. When I was looking through the pictures, uh, you had a section of the outside wall pulled out, and it looked like a different type of uh, uh, siding yeah, it's board and batten. So when they batten. went over that with clad board. Someone that, you know, I, I don't know when that was. Clad, well, probably when they put those windows in, then they just clad boarded the whole outside of the house. Now, with your new the plans that you had, you planned to go back with that. Go back with that board and batten, yes, sir. 
Okay. Well, you know, through the whole house, through the whole exterior of the house. Yep. That's okay. a, that's the plan. I already got a, a place in the city uh, lumber yard that has a, a hard pine board that he said will be perfect for that. So that's what we're going to go with because most of that either got termite damage or it's been, you know, it's, it's 110 years, whatever it is, 113 years old. It's probably all going to end up coming off, mm -hmm. you know, and that's, we, okay. you know, we're, we're here. We're, we're not only doing this for ourselves. We're saving a piece of history here to the, to the best of our ability and at, you know, considerable expense, but it's going to be something that's going to probably stay in our family. We, we just, uh, 12 years ago, we bought a house on Martha's Vineyard that was in the same condition, but instead of being 1,200 square feet, it was 2,200 square feet. It took us about five years to get that house back to where it belongs. In another historic district, it's called the Copeland District. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, uh, we did that all over, and this is uh, hopefully something that we'll be able to do. We just want to be able to enjoy it. Okay. You know? Mm -hmm. Nope. Anybody don't, else don't, have any don't, questions? Don't, don't, don't go yet. away yet. Don't sit down. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, explain again the reason for the dormer. Is is it operable windows? You talked about ventilation. Well, I'm thinking maybe light. ventilation, but, if, but for certain, if it was a fixed window for the light that would get into it, because with the, with, the, with the pitches on the roof and everything, it's hard to get a lot of light in that house. So, we were going to have that. So you're saying the inside of the house is going to be open up all yes, the way Yes, we're going to vault a little bit of that up in there so that we'd get that light in there during the natural light. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. you know that's, that, that's the idea behind it. It's kind of trying to make it a little bit more user friendly. Um, you know, we're going to get those bigger windows in too, so you, you have to get sworn in. Yeah, I'd be sworn in. <clears throat> yes, I'll do it really quickly. Do you swear to tell the truth uh, before the Historic Preservation Board for the City of Tarpon Springs this evening? Yes. Thank you. Yes. So just a, a quick aside, if you go by that house, it, it's really god awful. And we went into it, I don't know, maybe the third or fourth time because we were looking at different places and there was a hole in the roof and I saw the ceiling and I said, this is the house. And he, you know, he, I can't repeat what he said here in, in public, but anyway. But so if you look, it, it, it's called a cracker bungalow. And if you look at them, they did have the cathedral roof. So the heat would rise and they had the big windows, you know, for the ventilation and the porch all around it. Um, so yes, yeah, so we will have that window. T I just thought it would look pretty with just a little more light in there because I, I like a lot of light. And it is dark because we have a lot of trees around on one side. That's all. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Any more questions? Okay, let's see. Public comment? Go ahead. Hearing none. Uh, rebuttal? I'm good. No. Do you? Oh, no, I, I, I have no rebuttal. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, are we ready for... Uh, Motion? Oh, I oh. just. Go ahead. Is it okay to now we can we motion to keep the dormer? Because I think it has a purpose. It can be right. whatever you want to make as a motion. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I oh. don't want to make the motion though. Oh. <laughs> but I do want to keep the dormer. <laughs> you want to keep the ask. dormer? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> that sounds good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's really going to do that, or do you want me to? Okay, okay, I'll uh, I'll make a motion to approve uh, the application as presented, <clears throat> with staff recommendations, except for uh, removal of the dormer. Okay, do I hear a second? Second. Okay, any more discussion on that? Just what I said just, before. Just to clarify, it still uh -huh. says to maintain the historic proportions of the central entrance. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm just talking about the dormer. Yeah. But everything else is just about. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? Let's back up the front. Hmm? The proportion of the door to the, yeah. the opening. Yeah. The, the whole feel, the proportion of the building. Okay. 
which I don't think the dormer takes away from you. No. <coughs> personally. I mean, nothing is really, well, I already know that. Okay. Uh, oh, but we are discussing, right? Yes, we yeah. are discussing. Uh, because in the drawing, the front door went from a single door to a double door. Really? Almost that? According to the drawing here. Yeah, no, it does. It's right, it does. Unfortunately, yeah. it works because yeah. it's, it's totally. And, the, and I don't they, have a they, they, Everything's with that. totally balanced. Yeah, I, I just I'm mentioning that, that that's not original. The opening. Okay, so that would. I'm not. I'm not changing my uh, motion. Okay. So it's still symmetric. Okay, uh, proportions of the central entryway. What do you, what do you mean by that? Um, so the project proposes the replacement of all doors. Um, the product sheets for the doors have not been provided, but the rendering um, illustrates doors consistent with the original style. Um, and the doors are likely beyond repair. So I just wanted to clarify that they would not be um, enlarging the door opening. Okay. Even though it looked like that in the e drawing? Even though it looks like that on the rendering so that when they put their building permits in, we have it on record that they should be maintaining that historic proportion. Gotcha. Um, right. So, th so this, this okay. looks like a double door to me. It does, um, but I think it's kind of consistent. With, it, it's changing from what's there now, obviously. I don't think a double door would be inconsistent no. with the style, mm -hmm. just as long as we don't make the opening any larger. Okay. Okay, now what about having the double windows on each side? Um, no, well, no problem with that? <laughs> again, uh, the, applica the application states that they want to restore the original window heights and, and width, so right. that's what we're approving. Right. That's what we're approving. Okay, so that, that's, that's the thing right there, the width and height. Gotcha. Okay? Okay. Okay, we have a second. Do you have any more talking? <laughs> no more talking. You had your second here, yes. Okay. I see. Yeah. Okay, can we have a... Um, okay, so the... Uh, Motion is to approve application 2310 as presented with staff recommendations, except for the removal of the dormer, but to preserve the proportion of the central entryway. Um, is that the correct number I have that on this, that it's application number 22-137 and you read 2310 into the record. So can we clarify the application number, please? I'm looking at the last slide is what I'm looking at. 2310. It is 2310? It is 20 okay. All right. Sorry. Um, Ms. Uh -huh. oh. Well, uh, under staff recommendations, it says 22137. 20. So what is it? Sometimes reuses old for, slides for, for help. And well, right the staff is human. Staff is confirming that she, she did read the correct one, the slide that, that you're looking at, which is the same one I'm looking at. That is incorrect. That the is slide incorrect. is incorrect. But what she read as the application number 2310 is the correct application number. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Sorry about that. Always got to have one. Okay. Ready for a roll call vote? Um, Ms. Dinoff? Yes. Ms. Hallett? Yes. Ms. Ryan? No. Mr. Mrozinski? Yes. Mr. Sprecher? Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. At the beginning of this, I want to thank you people you for like the support you do. I love the doors. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy your new home. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, we're ready for the last one. This is on. Okay. This is 2212. Uh, 2312. Street. Hmm? Uh, yeah, 2312. Oh, we have 2212 on our thing here. Yeah. I have 2212. 22, okay, 2312. 2212. Yeah. What, 2212? 
Yes. No, she said 2312. No, it's it's 2312. 2312. Yes. 22. They they made a mistake. It's 23. Okay. All right. Um, so the application, uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little <laughs> tired here. Uh, application 2312 is at 323 South Spring Boulevard. Um, it's located here to show you. Uh, it's across the street from Craig Park on Spring Bayou. Uh, this shows its location. Um, it is a um, non-contributing historic home. Uh, the applicant is seeking a certificate of approval to renovate the subject property uh, by removing unsympathetic additions, replacing windows and doors, replacement of a cast door pilaster entryway roof with a gabled balustrade, replacement of the inset east-facing entryway with a north-facing entryway, and a new addition to the rear of the structure with a gabled roof. Uh, here's the uh, subject property on the 1926 Sanborn map. Uh, and this is the uh, picture from the Florida master site file. Uh, here's a picture of the property today. Well, not today, but recently. Um, so you can see um, some of the unsympathetic additions have already been removed. And, and what's remaining here is um, the historic structure. Um, here's a view from the west side. And the east side. And the west and south. And the south. Uh, for context, there's a multifamily property across the street and the park across the way. Uh, this is the existing site plan. Well, it's not actually existing anymore, but. Uh, and here is the proposed north and west elevations. And the east and south elevations. Uh, so we need to go through our standards of review. Um, so for height and width, the proposed project would remove unsympathetic additions to the property uh, and the addition to the rear of the property will alter the uh, original dimensions of the structure. However, the addition is consistent with the character and style of contributing structures in the immediate neighborhood. Uh, windows and doors, the window dimensions have previously been altered. Um, and um, the restoration, it's recommended that the approval of the project be conditioned by the restoration of the original window dimensions and configurations. Um, the project proposes to move the main entry on the facade from an inset east facing doorway to a north facing doorway, which would replace an existing window and an original concrete sill. It's recommended that the project approval be conditioned upon maintenance of the facade configuration. Um, the relationship of the structure and the neighborhood context. Um, the proposed project would restore um, the historic relationship of the structure to the streetscape and by removing those unsympathetic additions uh, that were obstructing scenic views of Craig Park and Spring Bayou. Uh, size and mass. Uh, the proposed addition includes a gabled shingled roof. Uh, the historic structure features a flat roof. The, our, re our design review guideline manual provides guidance um, that suggests that additions to flat roof buildings should generally also have flat roofs. Uh, but it also says that otherwise flat roofs should be avoided if possible. Um, but in guideline 29, it notes that uh, on additions that they should use roof shapes similar to those found historically in the district. Um, and they should be complementary to the architectural style of the main building. Uh, distinctive architectural features. Um, so the removal of the unsympathetic alterations um, 
would begin to restore the property and perhaps uh, bring it closer to being a contributing structure than well, rather now it's um, it's not contributing. Um, but the proposed project includes significant alterations to the portico facade entryway um, by relocating the door uh, and replacing that window. Also by replacing the cast balustrade portico with a gabled portico. And um, so the cast balustrade portico is a unique and distinctive feature of this property. Uh, in addition, arched window surrounds on the facade and concrete sills throughout the building envelope are not explicitly noted for restoration and retention. So it's recommended that approval of this project be conditioned on the restoration and retention of these features. Uh, and then here are relative um, relevant guidelines from the secretary. Um, so re retaining the historic character of the property, um, those distinctive features, repairing rather than replacing whenever possible, and perhaps uh, most important, new additions, exterior alterations, or related new construction, um, not, res not destroying historic materials, um, and differentiating the old and new. Um, I think I missed it, guys. Sorry, I'm getting tired, guys. Um, so yes, we do have guidelines on, <coughs> yeah, I'm going into that next. So we have universal additions for guidelines. We have universal guidelines for additions, I'm sorry. Um, so again, the, the removal of those unsympathetic additions is gonna, is gonna improve the state of the structure. Uh, but you guys need to satisfy your, yourselves that the addition is subordinate to the original structure. Um, particularly in guideline 25, it notes that uh, additions to historic buildings shall be cited in order that the principal building is dominant to the addition. And that new addition should be subordinate to the main building. Uh, and it notes that one way, a couple of ways this can be achieved is by making the addition smaller in scale than the main building or by keeping the roof line or parapet below that of the main building. Uh, again, this uh, talking about the roofing material on addition, so we want to keep the, the same kind of roof that we have on the original structure and uh, the same shape and slope. So rather than that gabled roof, uh, probably preferable to have a flat roof. Um, in guideline 52 about facade configuration, altering um, the balustrade would alter the historic facade and moving the entryway would also alter the historic facade. So um, my staff's preliminary recommendation is to appro uh, recommend approval with uh, guidelines that the replacement windows on the northern, western, and eastern elevations uh, restore historic window dimensions and use a 6 6 con window configuration. Uh, the arched window surround design on the northern facade be maintained, maintaining the concrete sills, um, repair the cast balustrade over the portico, uh, rather uh, on the north and west elevations, rather than replacing it. Um, and maintaining the original inset east facing entryway. Um, um, potentially also uh, to reduce the dimensions of the addition to be sub more clearly subordinate to the primary structure, utilizing a flat roof on the addition, uh, and that the certificate of approval will expire in three years if a building permit is not issued. And with that, if you have any questions. Just, just one. Uh, this the making these uh, additions subordinate. Wow, how much further smaller would it have to be? Just a tiny bit. If it's just a, if they just bring those dimensions in a tiny bit, that means it's subordinate to the primary structure. It was a foot. Too, huh? A foot, let's say. Well, to be uh, to be sub, subordinate, subordinate, it's got to be how much? What percentage of the? Uh, 
I, we really do not clarify what percentage it is. It really just needs to be a little bit smaller than the original structure. Okay. So if they could just adjust their design to make it a foot smaller on each side, that would satisfy that condition, I think. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, just, and you are offering the city's file for the board's consideration as evidence in this matter? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. What was that? She's offering the city's file for your consideration in this matter. I didn't hear you. She's, she's offering the city's file into evidence for the purpose of oh. this hearing. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any questions before we go? No. Okay, the applicant. John Stamper, 316 West Lemon Street. Okay. So you're saying that we cannot put the doorway to the front facing Craig Park? Uh, that's, that's what they're saying, yes. And how do we turn that no into a yes? Huh? How do we turn <laughs> that into a yes? Uh, I mean, because right now the way it looks, I mean, frank and honest, it looks like shit the way you come into that house. So if we eliminate that, add that square footage, and then put the really nice front door on it, the building is going to look fantastic. Yeah, no. Yeah, but see, that's not our purview right now. Our purview is historical. You know, that is a historical part of that house. So it's if it's not defining characteristic. What's then? What does non-contributing mean? Non-contributing is when you had all the other stuff on there. But oh, it still all the does, does, it still doesn't. The stuff that was never permitted. Huh? It still doesn't. Uh, uh, take away from it being an historical district. <clears throat> it's still partially historic. Do you have any pictures of what you uh, propose to finish? Well, she kind of does, you know, on the plans right there. So I can show you a quick little picture just to show you what the entrance would kind of look like if you'd like to take a peek at that. But if we can't switch it, I guess there's no, it, no uh, need to. Just, just another question, uh, why a gable roof? Well, I mean, this would be the entrance. No. Okay. Can we look at this? You That's can, it does have to be provided, provided to the, the secretary. Entrance. This was what the entrance would look like. Oh. Right there. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. what we're talking about, making the entrance look like. So mm -hmm. you would see that from Supreme Boulevard, mm -hmm. as opposed to the way it's designed right now. You know, you wouldn't have to take the door I mean, obviously, if we can't do it, we just live with it. But if we yeah. can improve our community, let's improve it. I mean, 20 years okay. ago, they could have just done what they wanted. This is true. Okay, you, you have to provide that to the board secretary. Who would that be? That would be Ms. Yothers. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's why we use comparative too. Yeah. Uh, well, let's let's go on to another one that uh, gable roof on the back. Right. Well, th the thinking behind that was just to kind of match the front of the entrance. If we did the front. Obviously, if we're not doing that front entrance, then it's irrelevant. Okay. Because we're going to do it in barrel tile. Okay, now that's the front entrance that you were thinking of shooting for? Correct. It would just be stunning. Yeah, but that changes the whole characteristic of that right. house. Right, the whole thing has changed. <laughs> that, that house changed a long time ago. <laughs> okay. Any more questions? Well, the upside of we can't do it, it saves me about 20 grand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, any more to say? No. Nope. Okay. Caroline, this, this is called masonry, masonry vernacular is the style of this? Yes, it is masonry vernacular. I'm surprised it's anything, but it's, it used to be a trailer there, right? Attached to it? 
Wasn't there a trailer attached to this? There, there was, uh, there was t two or three uh, additions. Oh, it was uh, a trailer. Uh, yeah, it was. It. I, just to, to note, you know, the, the unpermitted removal of those unsympathetic features really um, makes it more likely to be a contributing structure now. Mm -hmm. So. Because it, it almost looks Greek somewhat, some of the style of it, and then some of it looks southwestern okay. with the fireplace. Yeah. It's, it's just all over the board. Um, it's, it's a little bit of a mismatch. Uh, mishmash. And um, so can you clarify the issue by putting the front door facing spring? Because it's changing the the historic that that's likely how it was configured. I, I mean, no, that's how it was configured when it was originally constructed. I'm pretty sure on that. As typical of uh, buildings from that period, having that offset entryway. Mm -hmm. Then if we were gonna do that and keep the entrance the way it is, I'd probably want to put that carport back over there. Well, you removed the carport without a permit. <laughs> no, we had a demo permit. Well, then somebody didn't pass a demo permit pass. Yeah, we you, did. Yeah. You should not have been able to demo something without it coming before this board. It's the, dem the permit's hanging in the window. Okay, well, if you want to put the carport back, yeah. Well, no, I'm just saying if, if we change that, we might add another design to it and then just come back and revisit this. Yeah, that's fine. Because yeah. the, now you're going to be entering from that side, and you may as well, if it's going to be raining out, you know, somebody's going to be in there with a kid or something. So, mm -hmm. just a thought. The carport right here, right? It's all gone. It's gone, He's it's torn gone it now? Down. Yeah. When did you take it down? We wired to the house. She has a picture was of it, though, up there that was when it was there. That's all that's all. I went by it the other day. I went, did you just recently take it down? No, no. Oh, okay. No, he took it down quite a while ago. Okay. He took both sides down and left the middle part. Okay. Yeah, the rooms on the left were never permitted, and they actually encroached on the other lot. We've already split the lot, the, the address, there's now a new address to the left on the empty lot. And we have a new survey showing mm -hmm. that also. Can you go back to the um, what it looks like now? And you can actually see the mm -hmm. permit hanging in the window. Uh, demolitions on historic district properties um, need to be approved by this board, so somebody messed up there. Not you, <laughs> You're not you. Yeah. Uh, my understanding in the request for the approval is that um, you would be retroactively approving the removal of the carport and those other items that were already demoed yeah. that, that, um, that previously sense. were constructed without the permit. My sheet. And I'm sorry. Did you already call for public comment on this? No, I did not. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. okay, we got one over there. <laughs> mm -hmm. The only one. Yeah. <laughs> kind of figured you were coming up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Mills Hasse, 124 Shattuck Street. So, a couple of things. Number one, there were no building codes in Florida in the 20s. So, <clears throat> that's number one. Number two, the style of the house. Keep in mind that when the shipbuilders came here to Tarpon, we built things any 
you can't even put a real design on that house. They're kind of stretching it when it comes to that. So your question about what is it really is we're not sure. I would say that. I don't care what they say, but I would say from a builder's point of view, that house has, it's a mess. It was a mess. So changing the front door makes sense to me from the view of the house, what they're trying to do with that. I have to agree that the gable end on the back of the house is probably a bad idea, doesn't uh, contribute to it. But just because things were built a certain way in the 20s doesn't mean that it's right now. For example, my house, as you all well know, my house, there's no way in hell I could have built that block wall today with you guys. It wouldn't have been contributing. Uh, well, I've changed the front door of my house was before that. It's where it should be. It wasn't where it should have been on Lemon Street. It's now on that, which I think has improved the house quite a bit. So what these people are asking is, we're trying to improve this house, still retain an historic look to it. And from a builder's point of view, I think that they're right in what they're doing. If I didn't, I would say that too, but just like I don't think that they should have gone with the gable on the part of that, but just my comments. Any questions? Well, one, one of the, uh, just talking, one of the things about this house that's unique is the balustrada that goes along it. Uh, rather than having the, uh, changing the entryway or changing that. You could still have that. You could, you could, I mean, yes, if you look that. at that picture right now, it looks like that's the front door where that window is. But the right. front door, but leave the balustrada and the, and the columns and stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's and what you that's what you're intending, correct? We were never taking those columns out. That's part of the, the allure of that house. I mean, that the whole front of that house is, to me, that's what it should look like. But the front door is just in the wrong spot. And yeah, no, that I could, that could, that I can see a lot better rather than changing the whole thing. You know, just moving the door. And keep in mind, we they just put houses together, and oh, I know. <laughs> I've restored several houses here in town, and most of them, you know, they don't build them like the old days. You're damn right they don't. Yeah. That's, yeah. So just my comments. See what I'm saying there? Okay. Say it again. Okay. What they have now is that little recess, the balustrada mm -hmm. that is on, and then they have the columns, mm -hmm. you know, that's holding up this little mm -hmm. porch. Rather than changing all that, just move the door and close that little porch and move the door to the front. Oh, I thought uh, that's what they wanted to do. I no, they were changing the, they, they were changing, they looked like they were taking out the balustrada and uh, putting a new column in there. Let's see. Hang on, let me show you. Okay. The shadow line, you see. See this the, one right here? The, um, the shadow. The shadow. And this that is what they're. Page that. Right. Okay. That. That's what they want to do. Right? That's, that's what they're talking <laughs> about doing, but what, I, what I'm saying is. Yeah, I was looking at the elevation, the north it. elevation. As it was, the bell is trying to just yeah. move the door. Okay. Okay. Can you reference, I'm sorry, you can't kind of have side conversations. You need oh, to make we sure that the whole we, board can hear right you. Yeah, we were and, uh, talking in the mic. Right. Yes, but uh, you need to make sure the whole board can hear you. Okay. And you also need to make sure that the whole board knows what you're looking at. Okay. And it's clear for the record. So if that's a page out of your uh, materials here, can you please reference what page it yeah, is? Yeah, page number. Oh, shoot. The turd. This is the actually the slide elevation right the now. elevation page. The okay. elevation page. What I'm talking about here is that's what he wanted. Yeah, they wanted to change it to look more like a southeastern stop. Right. Okay. Ah. Right in here. Okay, right on the top. Whereas now you have the like uh, they call it balustrada. It's the columns, uh -huh. small columns on top. Well, that's the only original part of the house that yeah. would be there. But what we could do, what, what do you think about leaving that right. and putting the door, just enclosing that porch and putting the door on that side, in the front? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because then we keep the, uh, 
the character of the house. Right. Yeah, it's the only thing you kind of have left. Yeah. Let's see. What do you think? I'm fine with that. Yeah. I just keep looking at that drawing up there. Okay, this is taken out of existing picture and it go right in this alley uh mm. Bill, go right in here right okay mm -hmm. what do you think yeah yeah just leave this mm -hmm. yeah that would that's be gone. gone yeah this is all gone and this is the only character of the yeah Mm. Okay. Hey, Caroline, okay. what was the significance of keeping this, keeping the six over six window configuration? I know it's on there now, but I mean, it's what's on there now. It's. You think that's original? I, I do not think those windows are original at all. Um, I'm not. I'm not married to that because it is a little conjectural on my part that that's probably what was there. So um, I, I would say that the the arch window surrounds and the yeah. sills. Are, are definitely original architectural features that have probably been all um, the ones on the sides have definitely been altered though. Yes. Okay. The ones on the front we're not touching. Can't touch the murals again. Can I see that? <laughs> okay. So keep in mind um, this house. I, this house. I'm sorry. We, they already had public comment. They didn't say they stopped it, did you? You you had four minutes pursuant to their rules of procedure. There's four minutes okay, and per what person I for public comment. Uh, we can let them talk. Okay. 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 Just right. quick. So yeah. the house itself is wood frame with right. stucco nailed to it with the stuccos falling off because of the way it, the house is built. The front of the house is uh, concrete or block. And that's why it looks that way. But the rest of the house is all framed and it's a mess. So the only thing that's really original on that whole thing is probably just the front of the house. I mean, you have to think of that too. Plus, remember, no building codes back then. Let's see that right there. Okay. Full staff approvals with a couple of adjustments. what they plan to really, really do. That doesn't tell us anything. You just have to, I mean, it's the yeah. elevation is there. It's just, mm. you have to really look at it to understand it. it it's not different than a rendering. And it, it, I think he's, and I could be misunderstanding, I just thought that that was a representation of what the door could look like Correct. because it had yeah. a similar line on each side with the column or the, the detail on the side of the door looks similar to what's on the house. Yeah, so we're just looking at the door on this one. I don't, just think, we, at the door. I don't think that's literal, is it? No. no. Yeah. It's just, it's just the, the idea. to give you an idea of what they were going for. So do you want me to frame this up? Kind of from what you said and I'm thinking that way. Yeah, what do you think? Do you have any feedback on any of these? Mm -hmm. Because I just, I, I'm, I'm sure they're just going to flip it anyway. You think so? so? Yeah. I would motion to uh, go by staff recommendations with a couple of clarification. Um, take the six out of six window configuration out because I think with the style of the house it could go either way. So mm -hmm. we'll give them some ability to go either way. Um, keeping the arches like she mentioned, mm -hmm. keeping the concrete sills. Um, Bill, you mentioned allowing them to put the door to the front, to the spring side. So that would be another adjustment. But keeping the balustrada is then. Yeah, just but moving, moving the, door. the door. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no. The roof Move keeping the it flat the as, the as Caroline intended. Mm -hmm. And then the reducing there. by, you said, Caroline, one foot? So on, on either side. I mean, it's, it's not clear at all. It could even 
it just as long as it is subordinate to the primary structure is all it says. So do we have to put any, any kind of number to it? Okay, and then we'll just leave it as you've worded it. Does that cover it? That's covered. Do we have a second? Okay. Second. Okay. So we can get a vote. Okay. Any more discussion on this? No. Okay, let's, let's, let's read it one more time. Well, I actually was going to ask if you could repeat, like, some of the middle part. I got... Okay. Um, recommend to take the six out of six out of item number one right. to leave it open. Okay. Um, Above the door to face spring Number Boulevard. two would stay as stated. Number three would stay as sta stated. Um, number four um, would stay as stated, right? And then number five would be allowing the entry door to face Spring Street. Okay. And then six and seven would be as stated. Okay. okay do we have to put in uh, to enclose the, the entry porch? I just assumed that was just meaning we're moving the door to that side. Okay. And it would it would be enclosed. Okay. If you want to add that, well, I guess. Okay. And number seven stays the same. Yes. Okay. Um, Ms. Denoff? I don't think she heard you. Ms. Denoff? Yes. Okay. Ms. Hallett? Yes. Ms. Ryan? Yes. Mr. Mrozinski? Yes. Mr. Sprecher? Yes. Thank you, yeah. guys. Good night. Come up to Johnny's, I'll buy you a beer. <laughs> <laughs> and we're getting close on Catalina's. Uh -huh. Michelle said that the permits are almost done. Okay. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. She's got it. So he took down the trees. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hold it. Whoa, 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 whoa. We have a big Whoa, whoa. Uh, toward the end. <laughs> staff, do you have any more comments? No, staff has no comments. Oh, thank you. No. Board, you got any more comments? Yeah. No. That's okay. yeah, I just that's very that's quickly that's wanted to make sure we do have that special meeting that you talked about a few months ago to sort of put us all on the same page. Do you remember we talked about that? Yes, uh, but I did say that we were going to have that when we didn't have uh, a month when we didn't have cases. <laughs> oh, you mean we didn't have room tonight? To do that? <laughs> what? <laughs> yes, uh, I'm just throwing that out there because I didn't want you har, to forget har. about it. No, I will not forget about having a special meeting. I think you meeting, would, no. I wanted to put that on the... Yes, uh, and if, if, if it goes on long enough, we'll maybe just make a special meeting. So. Okay. Okay. And what is that meeting for? Um, just to go over the, the, the guidelines and... and have a, like a little refresher for everybody. Okay. okay. And discuss. Yeah. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you very Two much. Two hours beyond my bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I you. call this one. It is nine fifty-one. Yeah. And I call this one meeting adjourned. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Good job. Can we keep these? Mm.